It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, and we are ready with a great Easter Twit for you. I've got the colored eggs, and we've got a gassy vegetarian. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Winamp for Android, the ultimate media player for your desktop and Android device, featuring wireless sync. Download it free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 298, recorded April 24th, 2011, a boat on fire with a hole in it. This Week in Tech is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Meet easily with colleagues even when traveling or working remotely. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMeeting.com, promo code TWIT. And by FreshBooks, the easy online invoicing service that gets you paid quickly and makes you look more professional. Get started with a free package at FreshBooks.com. And by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID audible underscore com. It's time for Twit, the show that uh, <laughs> covers all the technology news. I'm laughing because we have a full house in the Twit studios. You know, I don't know what happened. It used to be that uh, a holiday would come and I wouldn't be able to get anybody to do Twit and I'd sit here doing it all by myself. And lo and behold, we got like eight people in this little teensy-weensy room, starting with, to my left, my good friend and old radio partner, Gina Smith, who's now editor-in-chief of Byte Magazine. Hi. I'm back. Good to have you back. Yeah, Welcome. a bunch of people in the chat room. I which we received from your listeners at Twit. You have you're getting contributors from our chat audience. I came on your show. That does three, not sound good. We I came on your show. I came on Twit to actually announce Byte, and asked for contributors. Got about fifteen hundred emails. Took the best of the best, and Team That's Byte great. is sixty. You have a team. Amazing people from Purnell. Now you're going to get Purnell, right? You're going to get Jerry Purnell on that. I got Jerry. Oh, that's awesome. Baby. He's a, he's mine. And it'll be at Byte.com. Will you do a paper magazine? www.byte.com. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll do a paper magazine or not. I for sure will do special PDFs. If you want to be around, my suggestion, don't do a paper magazine. Exactly. You know, you you know who knows about this? Mark Millian is here. Formerly I know about the paper. with it's the terrible. L.A. Times. And now uh, Mark is uh, at CNN. No more dead right. trees for him. Yeah. No paper involved there. I don't know what happened to your lower third. It says you're with AAA. Let me just fix that. How was that CNN? I, I must have leaned on the... Uh... I, liked, uh, I liked the folks at CNN when I was at ABC. They were Are you yeah, in CNN like uh, LA or San Francisco? San Francisco. So you're up here now? Yeah. That's great. Live in San, San Francisco. I, I always say San Fran, but apparently that's not no. acceptable here. Oh, it's better the people than Frisco. People born here, which are like one out of every 400 people you'll meet, <laughs> hate San Fran. For right example, here. I said it once in front of my wife. That was nine and a half years ago. I've never said it what since. What do we call it? On this. We call it the city. The city. It's okay. called the which city. Which confuses everybody. Because people because go, Because there's city? like, which city? <laughs> my <laughs> wife's lived here for 30 years, and I've never heard her call her that. She calls it San Francisco. Very explicit. No diminutive, very... no Frisco, no San Fran. That, that's ladies and gentlemen, that guy is Frisco Patrick. It's a terrible name. Frisco's bad. Don't yeah. say that to the Hells Angels, because that's what's printed on a lot of their T-shirts. Oh, really? Sell. Really? Well, the, the, like... our offices are down around the corner are from the Are you down by Santa Angels. Cruz? Uh, no. Uh, mm -hmm. our, the Revision 3 offices are around the corner from oh. the San Francisco Hells Angels. Santa Cruz? Well, Santa Cruz is... Uh, is that where the Hells, Hells Angels, Angels are? are? Well, Henry's a criminal attorney, and so a lot of the Hells Angels are down there, and he, he that's always where says I grew the, up. the devil lives in Santa Cruz. Well, that's where the, the devil's devil from, Santa, Santa Cruz. Cruz. Yeah, <laughs> the devil comes from Santa Cruz. Patrick Norton from TechZilla, my old buddy. Yay. And you were in the desert last week when we did our sixth anniversary twit. So thank you for the video. We played it. It was really, really nice. My apologies for thinking it was the fifth anniversary. Can you believe it's been six years? No, apparently I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. It's a shocker, isn't it? Well, uh, it, it was, uh, we had uh, Kevin and David Prager and uh, Robert Heron back, and it was really fun. But we did miss you. It wasn't the same without you, so thank you for coming this week. Oh, Did we save any of that champagne? No, of course not. So we'll just There's have to. There's champagne in the refrigerator. There is? There is. I saw it. If I start drinking, everyone runs. <laughs> oh, I have that's that right. same effect. He's a black coffee kind of guy. Yeah. Would you like some black coffee? 
Always. Okay, black coffee for Mr. Norton. <laughs> the Pope celebrate Easter. So. so there was so much news this week, it's kind of hard to know where to begin. Uh, one of the things we spent a lot of time uh, on uh, Mac Break Weekly talking about is Samsung and Apple. Yeah. Um, Samsung, who released, uh, has actually quite a, I think, a very good Android phone, the Galaxy S. Apple sued, saying it's a direct copy of... Of the of the iPhone, Mark, you 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 you've probably been cop, cop you know following this uh, story. Is there yeah. any merit in that? Well, I mean, Apple seems to be on a frenzy recently with their patent lawsuits. So um, I'm guessing they overstaffed in that department, and they're just <laughs> looking for something to do. But they have a big. That's what happens when you hire lawyers by the uh, yard. Yeah, well, you know, Samsung I responds by countersuing. Samsung is one of the big. Uh, s suppliers to Apple, they supply about f almost five billion dollars a year worth make of gear. The A5 chip, the A5 for the iPad 2. They make a lot of this, uh, the the uh, flash RAM that's used in all Apple devices. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we we actually, if if you go back and listen to Mac Break Weekly this week, we had Neil I. Patel on, who is not only former uh, editor at Engadget, but uh, wrote a very good piece on his website. Uh, talking about this and he's also an IP attorney, a former IP, a reformed IP attorney. What does he think? Um, you know, he thought there was some merit to it. In fact, if you go to his uh, website, which is the next big thing, is that right? Say again? This is my next big this thing. This is, com. I guess next big thing was taken. This <laughs> is my, that's you a lot to type. Next. Oh, sorry, I have to type now. <laughs> this is this, my next big thing. Doesn't work either. This, this is my next. Is my next. This is my next. Oh, it's this is my next. Whatever yeah. they say online, this is my next. Talk and uh, and uh, Thanks, he has a very, uh, I think, a very uh, good and lengthy article about um, the uh, the suit he and does. the counter suit. But let me let me show you. This is the article is good because it has the points of comparison that Samsung provided. In their law, in, or Apple provided in their lawsuit. Uh, by the way, you can see right on the front page that it is a complaint for patent infringement, yeah. federal false designation of origin, huh. and unfair competition, federal trademark infringement, state unfair competition, common law trademark infringement, and unjust enrichment. Their, Apple's contention is that Samsung intended to confuse consumers by releasing a phone that looks so much like the iPhone that consumers might accidentally buy it. Yeah, that'll happen. Now, there's one picture from the, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, Well, this is my close. point, is that I don't this think anybody so was fooled by this. But look at this. This is the Samsung phone on the left, the iPhone on the right. Uh, this is Samsung's Android kind of sugar that they put on top of it. Yeah. I, I'm just looking at this and I'm like, okay, the, the, actually the the icons. If, if well, I look were, at the icons. If I were the lawyers, the icons. Here's the icons. So on the left, yeah. Apple. On the right, Samsung. Yeah, they're all about the drop shadow. It's but I gotta tell you, look, if you're gonna do a, a an icon for a phone app, what you're gonna put way? a handset on it. Now it's green and it's got a gradient. Green, if you're gonna green, do a chat, green, they got a chat bubble, green, chat bubble green, with a smile. Flower, yeah, flower, flower. flower. The flower's kind of bad. I mean, the gear yeah. in the uh, settings, they've got a notepad for the notepad. But I'm, see, that's kind of just literal minded. On, on what do you think, that. Patrick? I don't know. I, you know, it, it's it's okay. One, this is uh, uh, Apple and Samsung are obviously severely pissed off at each other because Samsung's countersuing in four countries. They're going for ten major patents. Um, well, this is what happens when you do a patent <laughs> or a trademark lawsuit. It, it's mutually assured destruction, right? You know, exactly. People people acquire patents specifically so that you won't sue them. So that right. if you do sue them, you can count. They can counter sue you. Yeah, and Reuters is saying like the the, the Samsung counter counter suits involve power reduction during data transmission, 3G technology for reducing errors during data transmission, wireless data communications technology. So Samsung's like, great, you, you want to get pissy about a retail product, we're going to try to undermine how effective your device functions as a phone. With our own chips. That's a big stick. Yeah. Right, well, let me I just think throw, Samsung will win its suit in Apple. Let me just throw something so. else in, because I, I showed this to Neela, and this is, of course, he said, yes, we've all seen this. The phone on the left is a Samsung phone. It's the F700. It predates the iPhone. Samsung, dun, dun, dun. Pre Samsung could probably pretty reasonably say, uh, Judge, it went the other way. The left phone is a Samsung phone and predates the phone on the right, the iPhone. Mm. But icons aren't in color. They aren't. You don't have the same icon issue. I think any phone is 
any smartphone these days is going to have a big glass it's screen. It's a stick you hold up next to your head. <laughs> How many does that? Nokia How many was the grand experimenter. Right. They did the taco phone, yep. one of the Bad most mistake. epic fails yep. in phone history. Exactly. The flip phones are effectively dead. Slide out keyboards are the minority at this point. And it, you, when you close the keyboard, you still have a stick, a box, a deck of cards, a pack of cigarettes you hold up next to your head. There's not much to go to. The that's kind of my point is I don't, the, uh, you know, the, what it'll come down to in court, I guess, is did Samsung intentionally attempt to deceive consumers? Mm -hmm. Did they? Doesn't matter. It's about what you try to prove in court. Right. And, right. and at and this point, it's, it's a much larger playing field. Now, Apple's got lawyers dancing in five, you know, three continents, five, six countries, something like that. This is going to be crazy. It's going to be. It's going to cost the stockholders a fortune. And, no, and, it's not going to cost us. You know well, how many Apple's lawyer has well, in the true. building? Yeah, they're ready to go. This is, this is like chilling effect. We have a. You yeah. know, they have a hundred plus lawyers. I think. So. I think they have their own right building. Yeah, yeah, they do have their own building down there. In the lawyer building. Probably but I'll tell you, you remember when Apple uh, was suing Microsoft because they thought that Microsoft had ripped off the trash the can, field. the recycle bin, right? The recycle bin and everything. In fact, Microsoft had ripped off the Apple GUI, and then. Xerox but Apple came lost up. that lawsuit. A Apple lost that lawsuit. And Xerox came up and said, wait a minute, Apple. Where'd you think you got your whole drag and drop interface? Apple Plus. did a legitimate exchange of technology with Xerox for the walkthrough on Park. Yeah. That was a was deal legitimate. between they, Xerox exactly. and Apple. Microsoft saw a good thing and took so, as much of it as they we could. We don't need to pay for this. Yeah. It's exactly. just a trash can. Yeah. We'll just borrow the trash Microsoft can. Microsoft took, took what they could, and they with Windows 3.0, they, 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 they did. And, uh, so, and that uh, was a look and feel uh, lawsuit. Uh, it's different than this. And Joshua Topolsky does point out that that Samsung phone shipped after the iPhone, but right. was announced before the iPhone. But I think the announcement showed what it was going to look like. You know, I bet you the point a being... Problem that's beyond this that we're not seeing. Samsung and Apple are tight partners in the hardware realm, in the realm. They've got something going on. They got in a huge fight, and they just wouldn't decided you, to unleash the lawyers. would like to be the fly on the wall? And, you know, <laughs> no, you stole it. I yeah. did not. You stole it. I'm going to sue you. Go ahead. I'll sue you for I'll what you're doing you. with my battery management chip. It's well, kinda, it also makes exactly. me wonder if, if the different, you know, because we've seen at Sony where obviously the music department and the people that made the Walkman follow-ups never actually spoke to each other so that Sony crippled itself in portable music players, at least outside of, of mini discs, because the, the, the people in, in Sony, you know, basically the music department had sway over the control of whether or not Sony made a legitimate MP3 player. And Sony mm -hmm. forced 8-tracks and MP3 players fell incredibly far behind. Um, you know, you wonder if, if Samsung, if the people who make the phones inside of Samsung do a lot of talking with the people who sell the components from, from that area of Samsung. Yeah. This, is, sure this was this was talk a lot to each other, but do the management... Yeah, this was Neli's contention is that Samsung is a big Koretsu and that it's so big that these Huge. different divisions... In fact, he said when the cell phone wants, division wants to buy flash RAM, they bid for it for Samsung's flash RAM just like any other company. Right. So it's completely possible to sue the cell phone division and not have that impact the A5 supply. Even instance. the consumer divisions of Samsung operate very differently. Like mm -hmm. the TV divisions, the uh, home theater versus mobile right. is, you know, they're in different states. They're in different countries in some in some instances. So it's probably they, good for those companies on some level or those business units. Probably. Yeah, look at how Microsoft's advanced. bogged yeah. down by being so big and all in the same place and, and the divisions fight with each other. Well, Microsoft so you never can't kept a clean wall between its Well, and you can't release a product division. in Microsoft without uh, you know, some other product manager saying, oh, you know, and, and killing it. I mean, it's just nasty. Yeah, but the downside of that is that when, when there's not sharing, then people are developing the same right. things in separate divisions, like uh, me, like uh, Zooms movie downloads and services. Windows Phone. Like Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Zoom exactly. is a great example of that. Um, but you know, Microsoft, uh, they're now sharing Connect to the, to mm -hmm. the Windows division. I like division, that. Microsoft so. has become... The open, transparent, <laughs> the underdog. Underdog. Yeah. I love that. It's true. Google's become the new Microsoft, <laughs> and Microsoft has become the new Lotus. And who is? Something. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, or it's IBM. Like, Actually, you're right. IBM. I, think, I was going to say IBM. Like IBM. But, uh, so Microsoft's Wars. IBM. <laughs> I haven't heard that. Word Google is Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Philippe Kahn. Philippe Kahn. And Philippe who is Kahn, Apple yeah. in that? If if uh, Microsoft is IBM and Google is Microsoft. 
Apple's Apple. Yeah. Apple's Apple, but <laughs> they meaner. They haven't changed. They're Apple's, still Apple. Apple's Apple, but meaner than it ever was. But they're mean. They're the mean Apple. They're the mean Apple. They're, they're like, the older, wiser Apple. Yeah. yeah, they're the Darth Vader version. They're the, the dark side. Of so it, you know, there's a few more Apple stories we'll get to, but there's one that's just completely stupid and trivial, but I think surprising. Apparently, white iPhones are appearing now in Santa Clara at uh, stores in Santa Clara. They're supposed to be are, available this week? There are white iPhones. Do you care? No, I wouldn't. Buy Patrick, it. are you going to trade yours in? I know you really like the girly look. Yeah, I. You know, I don't own. <laughs> this is the only white. <laughs> this is the only white portable device. I like I'll the big X on it. Ever own for the rest of my is life? Is that to hide the apple, or just because you're? Well, partially to hide the apple because I I enjoy hiding the giant white light on the back of the notebook that oh, yeah. irritates it does, everyone it around is annoying, me. Yeah. Um, but mostly because when I first got this like three or four years ago at Revision Three, like nineteen people out of twenty five had white iPads. So you, this, or yours is obviously iPhones. different. Yes, because I actually picked up the wrong notebook after a meeting one day and got back to my desk and I was like, I'm never going to pick up the wrong notebook again. And a giant X on it. in case of earthquake, that's structurally more sound. <laughs> that's, uh, and that's, that's funny. really why you did it. Well, what's funny is he's got his Apple covered up. Oh, I lost it. I used to have an Apple sticker. On your Asus? <laughs> on my Asus. I got my Twit logo. Hey, I like that. He's rocking the Twit logo. That's Where'd great. you get that one? That's from you. Really? Oh. Yeah. And and what's bread pig? Because you have two stickers on your bread laptop. Uh, this is, is uh, Alexis Ohanian, the uh, founder of Reddit. That's his oh. sort of, like you know do whatever he wants project where he publishes the XKCD book mm -hmm. and oh, does cool. charity work. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Bread, bread, bread pig is neat. Yeah. Uh, Reddit Reddit, is, is Reddit deserves a lot of credit. Reddit went down. Rough week at Reddit. <laughs> yeah. Rough yeah. Well, week we're going to talk Reddit. about the rough week for a lot of servers, including PlayStation Network. And is anybody running down? on, yeah. Is PlayStation is still yeah. down. Yeah, and anybody running on EC2. Yeah. But uh, let's take a break. We'll come back and talk more. Our guest, Gina Smith, the new editor-in-chief of Byte Magazine. Yes, it's back, baby. It's back. Mark Millian from CNN.com. My old buddy, Patrick Norton from Tegzilla. I have to say, when I say Tegzilla, I say Tegzilla. Yeah, baby, it's Tegzilla. I want to talk a little bit about GoToMeeting very quickly, though, from our good friends at Citrix, Gina and I. Have some stories to tell about Citrix do we and Yakobucci. We do, Ed Yakobucci. Yeah, he he uh, started. Now he's doing like net jets or something, right? What he's doing now is yeah, uh, small private uh, jets. Private, little but you tiny lease Lear it. Jets, which you which do you own it outright or you lease you, it? You buy them. Oh, I'd like one of those. Yeah, Can you put me down for one? Citrix, and when we met him, he was it was to link a bunch of XTs together. Right. So remember, remember the eighty eighty eight based XT right. computer to link a bunch of. He was at to IBM. -user. Yeah. He was at IBM, and he was in charge of the OS two project at IBM way back when, when Microsoft uh, decided to trick IBM and do Windows instead. Well, and the funny Yakubushi thing is, there was, was a uh, there was a kind of intellectual property trade and. Yakabuchi went to Microsoft to help with NT, and Microsoft sent some people to help with OS2. And guess who got the better deal on that one? Yeah, well, NT's operating system is like three quarters OS2, right. according to Yakabuchi. Yeah. And as a result, he knew better than anybody how to do remote access on NT, and that's where you get this amazing back end that is powering all the Citrix products. They know remote access. Now, here's a here's a nice application for remote access. You don't want to make a a trip to visit with a client or a colleague, and a conference call seems so stale and well, just non-visual. What about go to meeting? Now, I know you've seen web conferencing solutions. There's nothing better than go to meeting. It's fast. It's easy. Now you can do a go to meeting on a Mac, a PC. You can visit. You can even attend a go to meeting. I did this the other day on an iPad. Every go to meeting has absolutely, as part of the deal, absolutely free. It has teleconferencing built in, so you, it sets up a phone bridge when you set up the meeting. But you can also use the computer's own uh, you know, microphone and uh, speakers and use VoIP. It is, it is just the simplest, best way to, for collaboration, for planning, for sales presentations, weekly status updates. Whatever you need to do when your team gets together, if they're spread out, use GoToMeeting. That's what we do. We do GoToMeeting several times a week now. In fact, actually, I think we had to buy a second account. We were doing so many GoToMeetings. You could try it free right now. If you just visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and enter T-W-I-T -T in the offer code box. That will give you 30 days free. Uh, if you haven't tried it yet, please do. It, it really is the best. And uh, we thank them so much for supporting our network in This Week in Tech. It was just over to the new studio. We did a little uh, Skype visit uh, to the new studio. Yeah, Gina, you were it. watching that. It was, was a lot of fun, watching. yeah. I can't wait because we're going to yeah, put our show. It, it was a lot of fun. Have you been over? You haven't seen it yet, have you, Patrick? I was actually just he in there. He was behind you, and you didn't I see snuck him. In. 
You were behind me? Yes. With the dog, no less. <laughs> you! <laughs> you're kidding! Yeah. No. Patrick was there. Why didn't you say hi? Well, you were busy. You were talking. You, you cracked the, me you up. You were talking presentation into it. Yeah. Oh, he, was, 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 he was trailing you. He was right behind you. The, oh, that's, I was also giggling hysterically like, dude, if you wanted to be alone in your office, you just didn't have to build up the network. You could have just done the podcast. <laughs> it was an Easter egg. Patrick was an Easter egg in our little uh, office tour. A human Easter egg in my A human shirt. Easter egg. He you was. look like one, actually. You're bright yellow today. I like it's that. one of my Jane shirts. <laughs> oh, I like it. It's really good. It's got brown some coat on. mysterious Chinese and a gun. So, uh, what'd you think? It's amazing. Can you believe that? I, I was actually kind of like, look at Leo. <laughs> Media magnet. Like, Doing remember? the tour of the new facility. And I'm like, he must be buying land up in Mendocino County. Oh, now. God. I, I wish I had We heard. used to have to stay at the travel lodge when we went to Las Vegas. Yeah, we've come a little, come a little ways. We've come a long but, way. You know, it, uh, it's, it's turn, you know, as with any construction project, it's turned out to be a little more pricey than we thought. But I, but <laughs> we're Take gonna, the initial estimate, triple it, and then double that in the last week. Pretty close, actually. We haven't got to the last week part yet. Well, God, I hope you're wrong on that part. But uh, it takes twice as long, costs twice as much, basically, right? That's why it's important to have good quality accounting. What is we do. Done? When is it going to be done? I, when you know, it's everybody done. asks me that. Exactly. The answer is when it's done. Because uh, you once said April, then you said May, then you said June. Yeah, I think we're talking June 15th. The reason Gina cares is because ByteCast can't launch until we actually have a well, round table. I want to be like, you know. You'll be one of the launch podcasts. I want to be one of your first yeah. uh, launch podcasts. In fact, you probably podcasts. will be the launch podcast. Yeah, and I'm hoping that you'll. But we're sitting, you know, here's the, you know, here's the thing. We're sitting in a room that was designed for me and, and just me alone on a camera. And we're jammed in here. We've got like five people in the audience. I mean, it's crazy. And. I don't know. But we're going to have a round table. We're going to have it's going to be a much better setup. I'm I got 20 bucks that says in the first week when something blows up, you're going to be like, I wish I was in the old office. I bet you anything. And it's going to be on tape and I'm going to laugh my ass off. <laughs> you're gonna get and two weeks screaming, later, you're going to be so happy. Screaming Leo. <laughs> screaming Leo. Screaming Leo. Well, what will happen is uh, this room is going to be transplanted. Really? Transplanted. Yeah, you know that, that, that glass area that I was in, that my new office? That's exactly the same size as this is. So, so we're going to take this room. We're going to actually saw it out. No, we're not going to saw it out. I'm sitting there like, you, <laughs> this, is what, this is a historical <laughs> No, we can't do that. The <laughs> lawsuit will we, never we, end, we built, dude. We built cabinetry <laughs> to match that. And we've got, you know, any red curtains. We've got, the, we got, you know, we're basically going to duplicate this. All the cameras, all the gear that's in here will go there. Um, so it will be, so people won't be too discombobulated by the Did move. you say your office is a glass room? Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's so. I don't like people, and I don't like it's the old germs. school. Like, you, so you've never. It's like clockwork orange. The, didn't they have like yeah, an old school like, newsroom at the LA Times, where like the the managing editor could see, yeah. and then he had curtains he would close before he called in somebody to fire there were them. Some Unless he like, hated them, in which case he'd leave the. <laughs> no, no. Here's open. a better analogy. Remember the cop, the buddy cop movies, right. where the two cops and they get in trouble with the lieutenant, who's always for some reason a black guy. I don't know why. And he's in his office, and he's looking it's out there. Sitting. Says, "Chestnut and Mayor, you get in here," and he chews him out. That's me. See? Old school. <laughs> and I will have a fifth no, of bourbon in my for desk. No, it's not to be soundproof. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's not the, the reason that... I don't know why there's glass around it, actually. Because it's my office. I don't want anybody in my office. Because Leo is always on stage. Across the room, whether people are in there. Um, why did we do the glass? Oh, um, because then people can see what's going on. You know, the whole idea is you're shooting in there. You want to see stuff going on kind of behind the scenes and stuff. So there's lots of long lines. And you know, Patrick, when you yeah. set up a set, you want depth. Well, the, like the, the biggest nightmare is a 20 by 20 foot room that has walls. And then you have these really short angles, no activity in the back. And you can't possibly succeed. And look, Leo, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe that we've, it's managed, all about lighting we've been there. six years jammed in this little box. I can't wait to, uh, well, to get it. It's great in here. The lighting's great. Let us move along. We were talking about uh, Apple, and there are uh, some other interesting stories. For instance, uh, Apple testing an iPhone for T-Mobile. Does that seem possible? You know, we, Absolutely. We, we haven't uh, heard much about an iPhone 5, and I think the consensus is there won't be an iPhone 5 in June. Yeah, it's gonna... But wouldn't it be interesting? We have heard that testing has been going on on an A5 dual-core iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. Again, rumors. Rumors. So the and, iPhone 4.5. I don't know what they would Whatever do. Whatever they I don't know what. Here's well, I mean, a, like, if, you know, you upgrade the processor, you, sure. you finally do, like, a, something crazy, like a 64, 128 gigabyte version of it, and yeah. you get half of the current user base, the iPhone 4, to buy that, and then that 
most of those people will buy the iPhone 5, which eventually ships before Christmas. And then you ha- right, then you have a Christmas project or a right. product for Apple and a dual core iPhone, and yeah, that's an exciting product. Well, what, what do you think of this, though? I mean, um, the problem is these are so easy to Photoshop. This is from Boy Genius Report. It is a white iPhone. It says T-Mobile 3G in the upper left-hand corner. Confidential and proprietary Apple's learning. If found, please contact 408, and then they blanked out the numbers. Um, Boy Genius is pretty good. It makes perfect sense. It AT&T is they buying exclusive T-Mobile. with AT&T, and now they're opening it up to everybody. Why not? Yeah, they said the Verizon deal was non-exclusive. They did so say that. There's nothing stopping them yeah. from opening the phone up to every yeah. carrier. And it makes, I mean, it makes really good business sense because at this point they're losing overall market share to Android success. What takes Android like 72 different models from 19 different manufacturers? So yeah, at this point it's it's getting well. the door yeah. get every single user you can on on carrying an iPhone. Is that um, a Dropkick Quick Murphy song, Katie Bar the Door? No. It should be. <laughs> well, actually, let me search. It might actually be. Uh, <laughs> I didn't play the music. It just, music. It just I, sounds I like a Dropkick Murphy actually, song. Actually, the new Dropkick we'll Murphy's album is out, if there are any Dropkick Murphy's fans out is there. It, see, is, is, it, is it plural or a singular? fans on the chat. Uh, Dropkick Murphy's S, no apostrophe. S, no apostrophe. Yeah. Okay. Somebody asked, why is Android better than the iPhone? Don't get us started. Uh, don't start that argument. Okay, just let me ask. Uh, okay, you have an iPhone. I have both. Because I work in an enterprise that forces me to carry a BlackBerry. You have a BlackBerry. That's not both. You, you have, have a BlackBerry and an this iPhone. This is my personal phone. And then what about you, Mark? iPhone, I got this right? For my work, iPhone. Yeah. And for play? That's all I got. Same thing. Yeah. I like to consolidate. And and Patrick, you're an Android guy, right? Uh, actually, I'm carrying an iPhone. Damn you. Well, I've got... <laughs> Language. I'm sorry. Leo. It's Easter. Do we, uh, do we have a... And Leo uh, burst this, into flames it, on camera. Is this still a five-second No, you all life? have iPhones. You all have iPhones. Well, yeah, I thought you guys would have adopted... $300 worth of GPS applications running on the iOS that work. So. Well, let's talk about the GPS applications on let's the talk iOS. Let's talk about shall tracked. we? Isn't actually, that awful? Okay, look. This, this is actually... This is a big story, right? I think it's a huge story. Um, I think it's the story. Well, why don't you tell us about no, it? No, 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 let Patrick talk. Tell, tell no, Patrick. Well, Patrick. It, it's yeah. an interesting thing. Uh, We're uh, agree totally. Alistair Allen. She's loquacious. And, uh, and <laughs> Bill Morton basically Gina. Wednesday last week of, at the Wear 2.0 conference, which is, uh, um, sorry, I'm having a vision of their campus in Sebastopol, but can't remember the name of the publishing company, um, who do make and everything else on the mm-hmm. planet. And all the animal books. I should remember O'Reilly. Thank O'Reilly. You. Yeah, I'm sitting here. I'm like, I'm. I'm just look O'Reilly's over your face. right shoulder. Yeah, you see all the animal books. Yeah, somewhere. The uh, but they basically revealed that there is a, for whatever reason, um, and, and we should point this out. One, your 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 carrier always knows where you are, and anybody who says your carrier should know where your phone is, you send them to remedial math, and you have a right. conversation afterwards. But they know not maybe, but they don't know uh, within sixty feet or five feet. They know which cell you're on. They know which cell tower you're on. So that's a pretty big radius. Yeah. Well, you know, you never know what else they know that that the engineers aren't right. talking about. But let's walk away from that. Right? Okay. So the 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 researchers found. Two really interesting things is one is that Apple is recording your location constantly. Two is that it is available on the machine you back your iPhone up to, mm-hmm. which means um, three with some very simple software, which now everybody on the internet knows about. Right. They can if they can somebody can run that on your machine. They can now f- track where you've been, yes. which depending on how you look at this. It's either a minor deal and not really worthy of considering, or it's incredibly potentially catastrophic thing that everybody should panic about. Um, I mean, it was Apple. I don't. It doesn't bother me in the least, and I'll tell you why. First of all, you you knew that, didn't you? I assumed that because <laughs> uh, of I mean, Doctor. Come on, here's you know, what, yeah. my poli sci professor in college who basically said if you you should always assume that someone is listening. Yeah. This is a map of uh, Stephen B. Johnson uh, and his whereabouts for the past not one, not two, not three, not four, but five years. Now, one of the reasons that's stored for so long is because Apple, when it backs up the phone, backs up everything. So we don't know if that's an intentional move to the desktop. It's just part of the... Well, this was backup. added in iOS 4, and Wait. I went back and I looked at the Oh, iOS. it's not in the original they, iOS. They had, it, they had it in iOS 3, but it wasn't as available. I don't think they were creating that that unencrypted file oh, that right. you could go in and actually. Uh, you know, my, do you think it was a mistake? No. Or intentional. No. It's a log. They, I went back and I I watched the uh, the keynote for iOS four and mm-hmm. they had um, the the name of the guy who heads mobile. I forget what his name is, but. 
They had Scott Forstall. They had him on stage talking about how multitasking works, how location services work. And he talks about, you know, we need to ping for your location and we, we keep a log of it so we can pass it on to uh, apps so they can send push alerts based on this info. Right. So this was stuff that was like, you know, they went over it, but I don't think it, it really sunk in with anybody when they were just discussing the back well, end of how this works. And also nobody, nobody probably really thought they're going to hold on to it forever. That's right? right. You know, if, if, I'm, if, if I fly from San Francisco to Las Vegas, great. I'm going to get the really irritating sponsored ads on Google for stuff I'm not searching for when I search on Google Maps. Not that I'm bitter about that. But, you know, I mean, you know, if, if I'm searching for a diesel gas station, I don't want to get information on a Ford dealership in the area or something like that. Not that I don't love Ford. I love Ford. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but it's, it's, it's fascinating that they are keeping all of the data in a single file backed up on your iPhone. It's just bizarre. Well, the, yeah. And is I mean, it sloppy code? You know. Strange that they wouldn't encrypt it, too. Bingo. But, right. That's Bingo. It, and that's, that's, where it's, that's the scary thing. Go well, ahead. why is that strange? Well, A, Apple had told the government they... Uh, Point blank, what about six months ago? No, we are not keeping not any true. private data. Not true. In no, fact, no, I'm going to pull up. I have the document. I'm going to pull up Ed Mark, the uh, response to Ed Markey from July 2010, in Hang which on. Apple said, not only do we collect this information, we tell you in the terms of service, it is part of the deal. You can opt out, they said, by turning off location services. They told him that July 2010. Gosh, We've known this for a long time. Give me a while to find this. I have the actual statement they made to Congress where they said. I'll pull it up for you. I got it right here. Yeah, I'll find it. Hold on, I'll find it. But uh, let me make a second point beyond that. Let's okay. consider you're right. It, Android phones do this too, but they keep it as cash. Yeah, the big they difference on the Android phone, when you, ins when you first set up an Android phone, it says, may we turn on location services. They, they you tell you explicitly in. and they give you a checkbox right. mm -hmm. and, and you can opt in or not. Now, admittedly, most people probably don't notice it, say yes and go on and forget that that happened. Yeah, well, how long does Android keep the data for? Well, it's well, that cash, we don't know. so as soon as the cash fills up, it's flushed and it starts again. Right. So this login file that's on the computer it's that now It's weird that they're saving it like that. Yeah. It's weird that they're saving but it. But that's why I think it's a mistake. And, it, and, it, and people are thinking this is just iOS 4. When I looked at it, it went back almost two and a half years online. Well, that's the other thing. It does seem to go back farther than goes, iOS 4. So iOS 4 has made it more accessible. Right. right. You know. If it weren't for iOS 4, we wouldn't be able to run these little programs right. that right. grab it and, and, and so plot it. And a lot it. of people are, you know, they take their privacy now for granted. People say privacy is dead. Everybody's got your, you know, information. But the fact is, <laughs> not if I can your GPS information would not have been available to anyone but the police, and it would have required a warrant. No, in the United not true. States. doesn't require a warrant. It's a pen, war pen register. Or a pen register. Well, but that's easy to get. And in right, fact... Sure. But you couldn't just run a program on your husband's desktop even and better. find out where was he last night. Or, the, or, if or your wife's now. desktop. Well, or your wife's. Uh, and a, a lot of the... Yeah, adultery's the most, over now. Thanks, no, Apple. Well, let's, let's walk away from adultery and let's talk about maybe spousal abuse. Because most of the impassioned stuff I've gotten about teaching people how to clear their cash or stuff like that have come from people who run centers for abused women. Because, yeah. you know, if a husband looks at the cash and sees somebody's looking for a social services or something... And and, and and goes ballistic. So and not that not that I I don't take adultery seriously, but you know, <laughs> the, 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 let's walk away from because everybody everybody can laugh at the you know, cheating spouse, ha ha ha, whatever. What about people who are abusive? What about people who have figured out a way to access someone's computer and take information? What about stalking? What about you know, what about if you're searching for another job at the office or something like that? I'm then you shouldn't you. be carrying a cell phone because, to be honest right. with you, this is the worst spy device ever invented. It's got a microphone. It's got a camera. It's got yeah. GPS Learn tracking. Learn to turn the thing off. I mean, if you are really paranoid, turn the phone off before you go anywhere. Yeah, or carry well, a feature true. phone because, to be honest with you, if you're carrying a smartphone with you, you're carrying the ultimate spy device with right. you. Well, In fact, we remember there was a phone that was made um, that allowed a spouse or whoever to turn on the microphone at any time and you'd substitute this for your wife's or husband's phone and then anytime you wanted without their knowledge you could turn on the microphone listen what was well, going that's on that's a felony in the state of california without a, Is it? without a release um eric schmidt in 2009 ago i found this quote said a snotty thing now we know eric schmidt back from when he was a he's always snotty in kid. trouble yeah but this is now when he was a big shot 2009 he said if you have something that you don't want anyone to know maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place yeah that's that off well, yeah but what that's a BS quote. I wouldn't, hold, BS er, I wouldn't hold Eric it's to that. It's easy to be holier than thou when you have billions in the bank. There you go. go but, that, but that's a, I mean, that's. A, I just, he claims uh, it's a joke. He, he was joking. Now, and it's, now a, it's, a it's a paper tie. No, it was a joke. But it's a paper tie. Eric, that's why Eric's no longer CEO for one, um, a lot of reasons. Yeah. But one of the reasons is he always put his foot in his mouth. But that's not, that's a paper tiger. The, the fact, I mean, people say that. But the fact is, uh, 
if you're carrying a cell phone, you 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 should know that you're carrying a look. I mean, people yeah. do now know that that you're carrying a device. Uh, all of the companies that make these smartphones collect anonymized mm -hmm. location data because it's how they market. You know, to people, they say, "Well, Pizza Hut. I can tell you when he's near a Pizza Hut. Would you like to know that?" People log in with Foursquare. People are using Google Latitude. I don't know. Does it bother you that you're that the that, Mark? Let me ask you. Does it bother you that Apple was keeping track of this information? It doesn't bother me personally. I don't know how much of it Apple was taking and how much of it was just stored locally on my right. machines. Um, and I don't know if that's even clear yet. Apple says they collect data, um, location data intermittently. So, you know, that's up to This is the July 12, 2010 uh, response to Ed Markey that Apple uh, sent. So we've known this since July 2010. Mm -hmm. By using any location-based services on your iPhone, this is in the terms of service, you agree and consent to Apple and its partners and licensees transmission, collection, maintenance, processing, and use of your location data to provide such products and services. You, and then here's Apple's, this is in the terms of service. You may withdraw this consent at any time by not using them. Well, but yeah. I, like I, that's they, your choice. There's turn people giggling GPS. in the back, but you can turn off the GPS, and you have the right. I, I think what and you what, can encrypt. And you look, can encrypt I, I I know Apple knows where I am at any given moment. I know my carrier knows where I am at any moment. I'm a little irritated that they're caching all they're saving data it and leaving it on my. Computer. It's kind of my opinion that that was an accident. That I'm, that, I'm, and I'm sure it'll be corrected in you know four dot whatever yeah, not version of the operating system. I hope so. Uh, I'm completely iTunes, with like, Patrick actually. on this. I can't think of a compelling reason for Apple to do it, and and clearly Apple would know of the. Storm He's going to take over. Yeah, I mean, what, what is it? You're not yeah. using what an is iPhone. He, Skynet? He's going to start. <laughs> <laughs> no, Google Skynet. is Skynet. They have the automated machines. They have the computer power. Google. They is have Skynet. the mapping. So Google is Skynet. They have VW Beetles wandering around with obviously someone behind the wheel because basically they talked to the the California DMV and they said they needed someone responsible behind the wheel of the self driving car. But yeah, Google is Skynet. <laughs> Okay, good to know. I just keep. I wanted to keep track of who Skynet is because it did go online, didn't it? The machines, like <laughs> this week, this week Skynet went online. I was just curious because I didn't hear much about it in the news. I just wanted to know. Maybe that's why EC2 went down. Just remember when you're searching for Skynet, search on something other than Google in case Google's masking the results. Ah. <laughs> ah. There Google. was my mistake. <laughs> I, I guess here's Microsoft. my point. Uh, if you carry a cell phone, you probably should be kind of aware of the fact that it seems to know where you are at all times. Right. It's got a microphone. It's got a camera. And it, it, we know that there are apps that turn these things on without letting you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's a spy device. So, I, I mean, it's good that this came out because people know it. I don't think Apple kept that file because Apple uh, had some nefarious purposes for it. I think it was a mistake. And uh, the fact that it's unencrypted points to that. Because if, if they were going to keep it, they'd encrypt it. And the fact that it didn't encrypt it opens this huge security hole for other people, you know, stealing your location data. Jeez, just jailbreak and the, the final them. point that I would make is that, as you said, law enforcement's been doing this all uh, all along. Yeah. We know that Sprint has a portal for law enforcement, mm -hmm. that law enforcement for a buck fifty can go and say, where was Mark Millian last night? And they'll tell him. Right. <laughs> so it's not like law do enforcement do doesn't have this information. Do any phone. Yeah. You yeah, know what? Get, every, every phone. Towers right. And they can yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And, the, and the phone, the, the wireless companies don't mind, know this, and they, and they offer this. Uh, and the standard for a pen register is very low because it's not considered content. Right. It's not, you know, the contents of your emails, just where you are. Yeah, the funny thing and I is think the reason for that is because I could look out the window and see where you are. I could follow you with a car and see where you are. Right. That information by itself isn't necessarily private information, is it? Oh, boy. It is to me. <laughs> is it where you are right now? You yeah. don't want anybody to know? I don't. Gina is not here right now. Well, I if want everyone like to know not here have... right now. But for the last two years or whatever, I mean, I don't want that information available to forget spouses even enterprise like if you said you well, in, well for they encrypt the encrypt the backup from your iphone yeah. and barring somebody by the way of that's all you power, can do yeah that does work right yeah. it, you can't encrypt it yeah. and you then assuming know. somebody doesn't steal your phone and, and use fairly you, powerful or i should say you know sophisticated yeah. forensic tools to get the information out of it you're pretty safe yeah they can jailbreak your iphone uh, and get that's oh, yeah, that's, that was the advice of one expert is, well, just don't jailbreak your iPhone. Because <laughs> then, then it's available. Don't let someone who's really ticked off at you jailbreak your iPhone. <laughs> okay, got it. I think the idea behind marketers sharing anonymized data is total garbage. Because right. you remember the uh, 
AOL's uh, AOL leaking the uh, the search what right. people were searching, but they were anonymous strings rather than names, <laughs> and they were a reporter in Florida tracked a woman down from this data immediately. Yeah. yeah, and uh, verified that it was her. And the same is absolutely true of location. There was a study recently that said that um, you know people. Uh, their habits of travel are 96% predictable. Right. So, right. if you get someone's travel data over the course of a year, that's enough data where you can you can pretty you know where they're going to be accurately. Yeah. Hey, say you sell that is. to the airlines. You, I you remember give them a coupon. You know, they go to Hawaii for Christmas every single year. I remember interviewing 25 years ago a company that uh, did this kind of thing, and they, if you told if you tell them you're zip code they can tell you what kind of car you probably drive what kind of magazines you guys i mean look at we're pretty predictable humans are very predictable even where your neighborhood is they can kind of pretty much tell what you buy what you eat what you do when, the, when a marketer or a technology company says no we're anonymizing this data don't it's not worry anonymous. It's, there's nothing so, anonymous about it <laughs> yeah. and i'll drop this but should we even care about privacy anymore it shouldn't i mean what we have the fourth. There's I'm a fourth to make a amendment. Glass house joke. <laughs> I live in a glass house. A glass no, obviously house. I you don't. Work, you work in a glass house. No, clearly office, I don't care about privacy. Will shortly be working. I'm out. missing that gene, so I'm asking you as real people. <laughs> I don't care. And you know, Jeff Jarvis and I have this conversation because he's writing a book called Public Parts. He's been a, a, a kind of an anti-privacy advocate. He's been saying, well, you know, what what do you you know what what do you what is what is privacy what is it what you're a very private person patrick actually yeah. you're a good example of somebody who's almost the exact opposite of me <laughs> <laughs> seriously yeah we work at, well yeah no i i i you know. you're very private you don't have a website you don't have uh you don't do have a website you do we'll talk about that but you're so I'm private sure. i never knew about it well. <laughs> it's an encrypted website it's, yeah well i i don't yeah. publish a lot of pictures of 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 my son on the web i've i've had people post in personal information i've politely asked them to keep them off my delete expert of wikipedia entry um because you know on on some level you know, there's there's a certain level of privacy I'd like to maintain until like if my son decides, hey, I want to be famous, like, you know, great, let's let's go make you famous. But I'm not gonna, you know, and partially also because my wife is intensely private. My wife would have the Jennifer zone where right. the cameras don't work, so she'd come right. and yell at me and 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 not be seen. Well, C on our CR in our chat room made that point. He says, okay, Leo, give me all the information and location of your daughter at all times. Yeah, that's yeah. your children. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, does everybody want to post right now? Just let, let's all right. say our social security number, mother's maiden name, and uh, well, social security number isn't in this. I mean, that's not yeah, your privacy. That's that something that, else. People send that in W nines across email every right. day. You know, Somebody in the chat room says, Leo, turn uh, your blippy back on. They want to know what you're buying. My blippy's still on. Oh, then I Did guess he was. I, I didn't turn it off. Is it is it not working? I didn't turn it off. Let me, I'll go look. Blippy is that, now that's a ridiculous site. That's the site that you're, it basically tweets for your credit cards. So when you buy, <laughs> <laughs> and your iTunes account and your Netflix account. So whenever you watch a movie or you buy some songs or you buy anything on your credit card, it announces this in this kind of tweet stream. And people follow you and to see what you're buying. See, part of the reason I, I, I keep a lot of stuff private is because I just don't want to deal with the response from the audience. Not that I don't love you all, but some of you hate my taste in movies. Some of you love my taste in movies. The politics thing and, like, politics and religion I avoid, like, the plague discussing in a public forum. Yeah. Because um, I, I just don't feel like having discussions about everything. Another interesting statement from the chat room, and I like this. This is from H in our chat room. He says, you can care about privacy... But you can't take the advantages of publicness without giving it up. And there are advantages to being public. I mean, by right. posting, you know, for instance, Blippi is a great advantage for people I follow who follow me because I, it's a recommendation engine. Right. So if I follow you, Patrick, and I see what movie you're watching, that's of interest to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to choose whether you're public about that or not. I think that I'm not saying people shouldn't have the right to choose privacy. Right. But if you do, that you shouldn't carry a cell phone and have location <laughs> services turned on and shouldn't be too shocked when you find out that, in fact, they're using that information to market. I mean, I, I, a number of the people, it, it, by, you know, all, all the guys that are your twit people, um, they were unconcerned. They felt like you. They were like, come on, you know, I, I use Foursquare or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I found, I found this little piece. I did some research on this story. I've got Apple telling Congress last July that all the location data that it collects from the iPhone is private. But now according... Well, I just read the same right. thing, and I read it or the earlier terms of service, which says we do collect it. They, private they means... Do it with private means... Consent. 
is what yeah, Apple you told know, Congress. Yeah, but did you read the rest of it? The user consent is you're using location services. That's your implicit consent. Well, as I soon as you use location services, you are according to Apple, right. you are implicitly saying, okay, track me. We're talking about implicit consent versus explicit Great, so we put in consent. a checkbox and we explain it down. If you want the GPS stuff to work, we're going to track your right. ass. Are That's you okay Google, with and, that? And Google do you want to log do that? on your PC of everywhere is you the, go? Is the way that Android does it, is that uh, okay with you? I mean, they, they warn you. They don't cache it. They don't save it. They warn you. They let you know. They're pretty explicit about the fact that they're right. selling it to marketers. Is that okay? Does that... Is that how it should have been I, done? I, I don't think we have any choice unless you want to use a non-smartphone. You know, if you want if you want to have location services or or you know GPS and and applications that do interesting things based on where you're located. Yeah, you know what you're you you are going to give consent on some level for that information to right. be public. In other words, if you want the benefits, you want the cool stuff, you're going to have to be marketed to, give it up. to, or you're yep. going to have to give up the information. And I can, like, I can live you know, with that as long as it's explicit and I get yeah. the choice. Well, it's also, it's, it's, I, I still run into people who are like, well, my email's private. Actually, no, your email's not <laughs> private. That's right. Your email, best Far case scenario, your, e your email is a postcard traveling on the Internet. Is somebody likely to see it? No. Uh, but, you know, do you send email at work? Yes, great. Your company owns the rights to that email. Right up to the Supreme Court. That's so right. be careful what you send in, on, on your corporate email. So it is, it is in fact, opt-in. The yeah. problem is if you want to live in the modern world, <laughs> you, you kind of have to opt-in. Well, and that's yeah. when things get interesting. Or, yeah. or, or, or you just you use a separate GPS device from your cell phone. Well, yeah, you could carry a handheld. That's mm -hmm. what you do, right? You used what to you do. do. Do you still carry a GPS? I, I, actually, you know, for this last trip, I did everything on the iPad. Isn't that interesting? Um, you well, were the one who taught me about GPS. Well, it's because I finally found an application that does. Well, I also used to Delorme as a tier for for the state of Utah, right. so I had a physical paper backup um, and two devices where I could do location. Not that I was going that far into the boonies, but um, there's a there's some really cool applications now that do vector based topo maps for the western like western eastern United States. So I could have literally all of the western United States in map format on my iPad. What do you use for that? Uh, I will show you in just a second. All right. Pull it out. He's going to demo As long as we're talking about that, this policy of Apple's has actually worked pretty well for them. Their quarterly results, yeah. they uh, they earned uh, $24.67 in revenue in three months. Six Tell billion profit. Profits. Six <laughs> billion profit. Uh, that's more than Google, by the way. Yep. Uh, so it's working. Uh, it's working. Because most of that money was not from selling my uh, personal information, no, I don't believe. No, from selling it's from a hardware. iPod Touches yeah. and iPads. Yeah, and phones. Yeah, the iPod's going up. Yeah. iPod sales are way down. They're still making tons of money. But they, uh, Well, you know, it's, there was a little blip in the iPad sales because iPad 2 came out. But they're doing okay. Well, I, I can never sit here without remembering when you and I hosted that show. And whenever the name Apple came up, we used to play Taps. The stock was We'd at two dollars. You had a button that was tapped, and it would be like. You'd say their stock was not science. two dollars. Was right. it really that low? Oh, it was. Yeah, it was like one or two. Oh. I mean, it, it was so low, and you used to play taps. We thought. Wish, we were, I'd, wish I'd bought some of that stock. We, we, we were journalists. We couldn't do that. No, I've never. You know, I don't think I've ever owned Apple stock. Four dollars was the bottom. Four dollars. Was that the bottom? Four dollars was the bottom. Well, it was really low. You play taps, and we would we would recommend hey, it. Hey, speaking Apple, of privacy. Sell it back to the stockholders. I want to talk about, in a second, we're going to take a break, I want to talk about Dropbox because, um, mm. hmm, kind of a surprise there. I've been using Dropbox for some time. Me too. Kind of a surprise there. Well, I don't know if, I, okay, the Dropbox thing is kind of interesting. Dropbox Hold is. Hold on. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold that thought. <laughs> Dropbox says, what does Dropbox say? Before we get to that, I want to tell you about FreshBooks.com. Do you do invoices? Yeah, you do invoices. Who doesn't do invoices? Do you have people to do invoices for you? If you've seen my operation. <laughs> <laughs> Can I show you? This is the, you know, I, I'll tell you, I, I'm so bad at invoices. I, I mentioned this before. I once uh, didn't invoice a company for nine months, and they weren't too happy about that. They didn't really want to pay me nine months later. No. No. So you got to send out the invoices on time, but who likes doing that? Well, Nobody. Amber MacArthur told me this is 2004 about fresh books, and it changed my life. I and two million other folks have been using it since it started in 2004. It is a complete. This was the first really web 2.0 site I ever saw. I have to say, what you do is you upload your logo, then it, FreshBooks. The invoicing is done very easily in a web form and 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 simple too. Not like doing an Excel spreadsheet. And then FreshBooks emails the invoice to your client. But one of the things I really love is that invoice has a pay him now button. 
and they can pay you right away with a credit card or one of 11 online payment services. There's also automated invoicing. So if you send the same invoice every month, it'll do it automatically. It'll even collect automatically if your client says okay. So you, the whole process can be completely transparent. Now, I was invoicing companies in Canada as well as the U.S. This was a great solution for me because it works in any currency. I didn't have to figure out what a Canadian dollar was worth. It looks good. It looks professional. And if for some reason you get a client that doesn't pay right away, automatic late payment reminders. You don't have to remember those either. Ooh. They even send paper invoices for those of you who like dead trees. <laughs> Send your client a dead tree for a small additional fee. Everybody looks at me and my stack of papers. Yeah, you, you and your papers. Uh, they actually print, stamp, and mail the invoice. I always send it both ways uh, to, to those clients because that way they get, they get the best of both worlds. They have an iPhone app, which makes it easy to track hours and put those hours right into the invoice. It's just a great solution. But get ready for this. My favorite part, free for the first three clients. So for many of us, that's all we ever need. 30 back. A 30-day money-back guarantee on all accounts. There are no contracts. You don't have to worry about uh, It's just uh, use it as you need it. And I tell you what, you're going to love it. Try it right now at FreshBooks.com. And uh, once a week, they have a drawing among all the people who sign up. All of our audience members who sign up for a birthday cake. It doesn't have to be your birthday. Just a really nice cake. A birthday. It's a good cake. A number of our, uh, our listeners have, have won them. FreshBooks.com. You'll love your invoicing. So Dropbox changed, and this is this raised a red flag. They changed their terms of service to say, oh, by the way, if the federal government asks for your information, we will give it to them. Right. That's not unusual, except that they had been promising that it was encrypted. Right. Well, it is encrypted. But they know the password. Well, yeah, of course they have to know the password. They're running the encryption, right? Well, okay, but for instance, there are services where... Right. You own the password, not them. True. Uh, like a, you know, it, it, it was an interesting thing. So I'm obviously a rabid Dropbox. Fan. Me too. So on, on Me one too. hand, I because I, I saw the title, but I'm not putting any things. more of my porn on there. <laughs> Stop well, look, putting your you porn know, on Dropbox. Part and, and part of it's really funny. It's like, so a lot of people are like, oh my god, they've had access. Anybody at the Dropbox company can read your stuff. Well, that's true. That's what Miguel de Acasa said. And the reality is, is, is like pretty much any other competently run company, they, they, we hope, right? Because you can't really see inside of somebody else's company unless somebody, you know, gets their whistleblower on. Right. But they basically, they're like, well, yeah, we have to be able to turn this, the, federal law says we have to be able to turn this information over. Uh, uh, if they have access to it. If they have access to right. it. Right. So I and use. That's where it gets interesting. This is what Randall Schwartz told me about this service that La C owns called Walla. You know about yeah. Walla? Have you ever tried Walla? Not even a little bit. Yeah. So Walla encrypts before they send it. In other words, you have the keys and they don't. That They're, sounds better to me. Yeah, it's uh, it's encrypted on your device. Right. So on the iPhone app, it it just pulls in the raw data and then the app uses processing power to encrypt. Do it you use it? I don't, but I met with a guy at South by Southwest. Who See. I would use it, except that everything supports Dropbox, right? Yeah, so I mean, Dropbox <laughs> is great. There, Walla is huge in Europe, but not so big here. One of the things I like about Walla is if you give them... This is a little weird, and, and, and may not pass the sniff test, Patrick, so listen. If you... Um, uh, you can set up... So for, you set it up. So I set it up on my Mac that's running all the time, and I gave it 100 gigs. I said, you can use this to store other people's stuff. Right. And if you do that, then you get, as soon as they validate that you're online a, a sufficient amount of time, right. you get 100 gigs of storage free. Cool. So, you know, it's, I don't know, it's like 20 bucks a month for my 50 gig uh, Dropbox or 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. Yeah, it, it adds up. But this way, I get a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. and, and now, I'm storing people's stuff, but they say they slice it. In such, first of all, it's encrypted, right? So this this is why they have to have encryption, because mm -hmm. otherwise, I could see I could see somebody else's porn. Do you guys know if SugarSync or Box.net encrypt? Ah, that's a good question. You'd have Does to read the terms of service. Well, they, on on the, uh, some level, they all maybe some encrypt. Of the, bike guys the question is, is whether or not they have well, access right. the ability. One to of our sponsors, data. Carbonite, right. used to do it the Dropbox way, where they would have the key, and then somebody said, "Wait a minute, I'm not going to use it because I want AES encryption that I have the key," right. and they did change there. Uh, system so that you could. I wouldn't be surprised. It. It, it would be interesting to see if Dropbox rapidly changes this policy in the near future. Jungle Disk. There's another example of a, a system that's much like Dropbox that you encrypt 
at your end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's secure. Uh, but something Burgess also you can always. Jungle disc. Yeah, I like Jungle Disk. I use Jungle Disk. Yeah, jungle Disk is expensive. It, it is. Expensive. It doesn't. It doesn't work as well for me as compared to some of the other services. I mean, you can always. But is it more private? And it's I don't know. If I it get, is more you know, private. If I want to get paranoid about privacy, I encrypt everything with TrueCrypt before I put it anywhere. You know, and that's yeah. that's the answer. Is the way to go. Is even if you're using Dropbox, you can use TrueCrypt. Yeah. And or it, any other you know cryptography program that you choose. I just I just like TrueCrypt because true it's, it's free. It's open source. It's yeah. free. It's free. And well, it's, and the, it's here's good. the unfortunately the same reason that Mark still uses Dropbox is why I use Dropbox is every iPhone app works with it. Everybody supports Dropbox. Text expanders keeps my text expansion stuff on Dropbox, so it's everywhere. I mean, it's just a bunch of my friends use it, so we have our share shared drops. Yeah. yeah, Walla does sharing. But no, I don't know anybody that uses it. Now he's getting all of his friends to move to Walla. You if know. we could only get everybody to move, please, everybody, Maybe move to Walla. Start, uh, let's all, everyone on this show right now, start weeping. Walla. Leo said to go to Walla. We're I'm downloading Walla right now as we're speaking. Made. So, uh, I just wish that, uh, but see all these iPhone apps, you know, I, I, I use Gina, Gina Trapani wrote a, a really great to-do list app that uses Dropbox to store the to-do list. So it works across all my platforms and it's a common to-do list. But it's you know supports Dropbox. It's not going to support Walla. So you know, a friend of mine said the other day, and it was really funny. He's like, "What was the name of the search engine we all used before Google?" Alta, Alta Vista. Alta Vista. Yeah. What about it? Yeah. I remember that kid that started. Just, it. What, I'm, what, what I'm saying is, you know, it, <laughs> whatever happened to them? You know, it, it, the worm can turn, man. Something. You know, it doesn't oh, really? take a whole lot for everybody to move to a new service. You know, not to take anything like Dropbox guys or. You know, if they're listening, they'll probably be like, dude, don't say that. <laughs> Walla, just in case we can start a grand swell. I've done this before, and it's never worked. Remember when I left <laughs> I left Twitter? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This That's doesn't, this, this never works. But W-U-A-L-A.com. Walla. Walla. You know who told me about this? Randall Schwartz. I'll give him credit at Floss Weekly. He, he, he's a big Walla fan. How's diaspora working out for you, Leo? Yeah, I love that diaspora. <laughs> Man, watch out, Facebook. You're yeah. in trouble now. Actually, I get invitations periodically from somebody who says, join me on Diaspora. <laughs> Are you on Diaspora? No. no. I keep but getting I, invitations saying, Leo's on Diaspora. Why aren't you too? Everyone really? I know on there says Leo is the the their same, only friend on wait, Diaspora. That's like the major source of scam <laughs> I, I have like, is that Leo is on I'm Diaspora. I'm like Tom on MySpace. I'm everybody's friend on Diaspora. <laughs> One of they my got, bright guys just bought me a Jungle Disk account. Aww. Thank you. Thank you, Team Bud. If, if, if Diaspora were right. smart, um, I don't know. They take the money and go to the south of France because they got a quarter of a million dollars from Kickstarter. Yeah. And uh, obviously, this is a dead. This is a dead in the water, right? I don't know. I mean, remember Linux? Linux. Whatever happened to them? <laughs> they took over the back end of the internet. Oh yeah, that's yeah. To the <laughs> Let me sign in. I do. I, I'm. So, I've been on. Well, You've great. Been on the whole Diaspora, time? you missed your chance. We're doing some maintenance that's and should it. be back around seven o'clock. <laughs> Diaspora. Okay, that's it. Nobody's online Sunday afternoon. That's so it. Apparently nobody is online Sunday afternoon. If Diaspora was smart, <laughs> they'd sell to Facebook. So Mark Zuckerberg someone? invested in what? Diaspora. What? He did, but not to a lot. The, uh, to the Kickstarter. Yeah, he probably he thought like it was funny. Or something. Yeah, he thought yeah, it was I'm funny. sure he thought it was funny. We got turned down. I wanted to do a Kickstarter uh, for the new studio because we're going we're gonna to sell bricks with your name etched. You'll get one. <gasps> With your name etched on on it for like a hundred bucks, and I thought, oh, this would be a perfect Kickstarter project, but they didn't. They turned us down. Why? Why Kickstarter? Why, Why bricks? Why bricks? Bricks for what would you like? Do I get a brick? Something more permanent. So only Patrick gets a brick. <laughs> I'm well, Patrick gets a brick because he, he's a, like he a founder. <laughs> So you can have a brick. You want a brick? See the you red get a brick. dot? I was part of that decision yeah. in that logo. I had a baby. I had a one-year-old at home. I could not be a father. I would have been there had I not By had the way. a squalling child in my house. Pewter Joe, yeah. Punter Joe in our chat room says, actually, Diaspora's message says, sorry, Leo, Diaspora is down for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. We got a hit. We got a hit. Um, let's talk Very about funny. the, uh, the uh, outages because this is a big deal. Amazon's EC2, which is nominally very reliable. Right. Is, is still down for some people, isn't it? Yeah, it's what I will. Uh, you know, PlayStation Network's down. Um, it hurt us because MediaFly, which is our does our podcast stuff on a lot of platforms, including right. Roku, is on EC2. So they they've been out for quite some. I don't time. know if I've because I was reading stuff and I still don't think anybody either. I don't know if Amazon's really talking about what they think. They're mostly you know it, it's not hacking. It's not this. It's not yeah, that. It's not hacking. That's, uh, that seems well. You know why they say that? Because PSN was hacking. Right. Right. Uh, but we still don't know why it's down. 
It probably was. It yeah. sound you hear if you're listening to the podcast. It sounds people typing on Google trying to find what the answer is. I think there's a website. It was, it was weird. At their plant in yeah. Virginia, right? At their data center in yeah. uh, in Virginia, mm -hmm. and the people who were affected were the companies that, uh, like Foursquare and Quora, companies that didn't pay for extensive backup services. Oh, so Amazon. you could have spent more. Right. So they could have, you know, uh, had redundant backups in separate data centers, but they right. put all of their eggs, right. happy Easter, into the, into the basket in Virginia. and Near Dulles Airport. Near and Dulles. they got rocked. Is yeah. this... Um, is this... Does this hurt the notion of cloud computing? Well, you could say that it, this isn't real cloud computing, Leo, because they didn't distribute it through multiple locations on the cloud. Yeah, but that's exactly, I mean, this is how cloud computing is probably going to be done, right? Yeah, you're going to think you're in 27 locations, and actually your low-cost bid puts you in one. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's really funny because, like, for CDNs. Look at this. This didn't take long. Here's an e-book. Called EC2 Enabled, a complete guide to staying airborne when cloud computing becomes turbulent. Somebody's already written an ebook. Well, <laughs> because it's an ebook and you paid a hundred dollars for it, doesn't I, mean it's I, not. I love paragraphs. how fast that happens. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It's kind of evil in a really cool way. Yeah, it is <laughs> instant cool. publishing. Um, yeah. so you don't think that this hurts the reputation of cloud computing? Well, uh, you know, what I mean? we've been watching this for like how many decades? Everything's going to be on the server. I don't know. It's going to be on the desktop. Everything's going to be on local. Everybody's going to be on the cloud. I mean, it, it, no, because on, on some level, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's What's weird is that it's still broken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this was Larry Ellison's grand vision, right, in 19 You worked for this company. And I Think worked Nick. for the very, for Nick, the new internet computer company, which was the NC. But in 98, he was saying everything eventually will be, and he didn't use the word cloud because that word didn't, Exist yet? Exist yet, but right. it was. It won't be local. You won't have to have a hard disk. And you know, and we built a company around this, and there were no cloud apps. And of course, the company. Right. You know, I mean, that was ten. I years bought ago. one of those little eight dollar. You know. Did you buy our Nick? Yeah, <laughs> our Nick was I got like, it uh, at uh, yeah. Def Con. Like, yeah, I got a. There was a pile of them at Def Con for like. Yeah, five you can go to the each. computer museum and see. see They're five dollars now. That, well, that we this did. was five years ago. Oh. You know. Yeah. Do you have one, Gina, now. still? Yeah, I have like Would 10, you bring 10 it? Nicks in the garage. Could you give they me were one? They were $100. Can you give me one for our um, studio? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you a brick. <laughs> <laughs> brick <laughs> the brick's worth it's more. It's a deal. The brick I, works. It, hey, my thing still works. Are you kidding that thing? What do you plug it into? It, it, was it? A, it, had a, it was a Linux-based system. Oh, Where's interesting. The I, well, it was a Linux-based system that it directly into Internet Explorer. Oh, there uh, you go. Or, that's a good design. <laughs> well, that's all it did was it went on the internet. So it's a there what were, it is is Chrome. No it's Chrome OS. Yeah. It's Chrome OS before there was a Chrome right. OS. That's all. But this was in 2000, yeah. so there were no apps. There was no word processor. There's nothing there anybody enough, could do uh, the, bandwidth for it. I'm sure people it, couldn't. Well, no, they were dialogue. Inside the company, it would be. Okay. Oh yeah. If you, that was if probably you had, like, the a idea. Call center, right? You have a thousand people, and you want to make sure they can't browse the internet then you have these cheap little devices with a monitor and and, and a single application it Bingo. runs and they can't hack around it and they can't get into it unless you've got like one Patrick, that's hardcore it. linux geek we were able to sell this stuff right. uh internationally, into, the verticals. into verticals but in you know to americans they'd go what no windows no hard disk that's not a computer i'm like yeah but it's 199 dollars the cheapest pc is 700 right. at the time but there was no cloud and i used to sit in scott mcneely's office at sun and beg him to finish up Star Office. <laughs> and he would say, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it, but I'm going to a hockey game. I'm like, yeah, well, my company's a We fire. were processing. Yeah, we, we, and Star I, Office has kind of gone through a little rocky transition. Apparently, is. Oracle's not real. F it's kind of come around, hasn't it? It's an Oracle product now. Well, I mean, you know. They're not real I fond of Larry. it. I said, Larry, buy the It's forked. Thing. Yes, it's in a million cool. ways, in a million pieces. So here's the latest, if you go the to. Cloud is here to stay. I'm, I'm, I believe what you, I'm with you. If you go to status.aws.amazon.com, <laughs> maybe the cloud's here to stay, but but uh, Amazon's EC2 instance in North Virginia, yeah. instance connectivity, latency, and error rates dun, dun, is dun. still down. We are continuing to recover remaining stuck EBS volumes in the affected availability zone. This is Skynet. And the pace of volume recovery is now steadily increasing. So I, it's interesting to read this because I don't know what it means, but I suppose somebody does. And <laughs> it's interesting that it took so long to get this back It off. is interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What about PSN? They were hacked. 
they well they PlayStation Network. Well, the, the anonymous group that uh, they thought hacked them. It wasn't anonymous. Said they weren't. They didn't do it. But I guess why would you admit to it if, if you did do it's it? Actually, two. anonymous is pretty big on. Being admitting, anonymous? Do they typically well, admit? They wouldn't bring the <laughs> PSN. They shouldn't call themselves anonymous. Why would they bring PSN down, though? Was there something going on that we don't well, know Yeah, about? there were all these big game releases this weekend. I, we, we've got a guy, Jacob Lopez, and he sent me the very first story on this. It's down. The PlayStation Network is down. It's going to be down all through the holiday weekend. Okay, so Sony blogged that it turned off the network. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. It's not down. We, it's no, well, t-shirt. on Wednesday, we uh, because we, there was an intruder yeah. alert. So that they were being hacked. Yeah. Uh, they called it a, an external intrusion on our system. In order to conduct a thorough investigation to verify the smooth and secure operation of our network services. See, they're afraid that they, who knows what was put on there. And what they don't want to do is spread that to machines. Now, right? 47 minutes ago from the AP, Sony says they're rebuilding PlayStation Network. That sounds... Oh, that doesn't uh, sound good. Intense. And apparently, they're, it's interesting because they're using Minecraft to do it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Minecraft. Might take them a little while. Oops. Do you play Minecraft? Anybody? I'm trying to avoid Minecraft because it's the kind of thing I probably would... I was watching a YouTube video. video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, when you have kids in the house, small kids... You I don't, don't so there's mind. a YouTube video of a guy who built an automatic wheat harvesting machine in Minecraft... This thing, it must, if it were real world, it'd be like acres. It's like he's got pumps and conduits right. and water. He pulls a lever and water runs down and then it goes through fizzes and fill. And it's like this elaborate thing. And I'm thinking, how long did that take? How long did it? I don't know. Well, if he spent mm. as much time working on it as you do podcasting about 30 hours a week. I think you must. I think you'd have to spend. It'd have to be like a full time job. Well, how many people do you know? Like, could be like, yeah, I was playing World of Warcraft for like seven hours. Yeah, last that's night. very common. Yeah. I've been playing Portal too. At least in Minecraft, you're 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 not running around sort of a small dwarf in you know whatever cavern. You're killing things and finding gold. Yeah, but it's eight bit. It's weird looking. <laughs> Everything's weird looking. Know. Dungeon and Somebody Dragon apparently no built bit. a working yeah, arithmetic that. logic unit. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> a working one in Minecraft. <sighs> yeah, I do like Portal too. Portal two does come to an end, however, unless you play cooperative, then you have to do it again. You play that stuff? Wow. I love Portal 2. You love Portal 2? Portal 2 is awesome. Portal what you looking at there? That's when they posted that on the PlayStation blog that yeah. they're rebuilding everything. They're, they're re rebuilding it. They all. said they're rebuilding our everything on April 22nd. Yeah, involve rebuilding our system wow. to further strengthen our network infrastructure. Well, <laughs> yeah. this task is time consuming. We decided it was worth the time necessary to provide the system with additional security. Oh, so that's scary. scary. It's like we, we just. Nice. Didn't scam. have a secure system, so yeah. we're going you know, oh, to make so it secure. Scary. Well, especially because we Steam was supposed to launch this, this week on PS3. Right. Oh, is that this week? There was oh, a bunch of man. stuff that was supposed to launch on PS3. Portal 2, Mortal Kombat, yep. and the Steam integration on Steam PS3. And the new Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> trouble saying that. Portal, Mortal and, of Kombat. course, there's like 4,000 pages, 363 comments. Oh, Thanks. Yeah. Hope this gets fixed soon. Yeah, I, I appreciate play. the update, but so, pre try to narrow down a little more time for me. So Sad can, face. Can you not? <laughs> can you not play a PS? Can you not play a PlayStation Live? You know, or whatever they call it. No, you can't. I, I tried uh, to get on this morning to watch Netflix, and it kept flashing like you must log in. So you have to like you know hit cancel a couple times wow. to actually watch anything. Yeah, I think Sony's. Uh, also, uh, trying to trick us there with that. In a related but sad story, uh, Norio Oga, the former chairman of Sony. Uh, passed away at uh, the age of 81 yesterday. If you like CDs, you should feel sad. Is he the guy? Yeah. Well, he, he was kind of the champion for, for CD technology. Although Phillips invented the CD, but he yes. was the one who put it on the map. Yeah. So he was uh, chairman of Sony from 82 to 95. Um, Sony Music put together, Sony Pictures, Sony Computer, uh, really the PlayStation. He was a came out of one that. rich Japanese dude. He uh, he replaced all those cassettes yeah. with with CDs. Well, that's sad. I, it's sad. I mean, as well, we see was, these pioneers know. leaving, I mean, it'll it'll soon. Well, speaking of pioneers, Max Matthews died this week. Yeah. Yeah. Who's that? Nobody, you know who Max Matthews yeah. is? Yeah. When Max did he die? Ma Who's Max uh, Matthews? Max Matthews uh, was the guy at Bell Labs who wrote the original yeah. program to synthesize music on a mainframe computer. No kidding. Yeah, actually. Uh, this the is the obituary segment of uh, this. <laughs> I've got one too.
It's like well, who's who will die. Who's next? dead? We could this could this could happen more often. We should start doing this. Who's dead? <laughs> and who's dead? Enormously. Well, but it's it's kind of like you know. Okay, so music geeks like from the eighties or nineties, you probably heard of like uh, Max, like Op Max, C Sound, um, came out of uh, Matthew's work. But if you've seen. Here it is, the, the New York Times. The, the implications of Matthew's early research reached popular audiences through the 1968 film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, wow. In which the HAL 9000 computer sings Daisy, Daisy Bell. Daisy Bell. Yeah, but he was, that was one of the, the really early successes of synthesized music was they chose to, and it's an amazing programming feat in the late 60s, to program the mainframes to synthesize uh, a voice, an artificial voice singing that. Yeah. That's why they. That's why that became the song as the computers coming down in in uh, uh, in two thousand one. That's so. That's very interesting. You know, I. I mean, the notion of the voice synthesis. Synthesization. Can you say that for me, please? Synthesization. I don't think it's even a word. A band called Dream Theater. No. And they've I love Dream Theater. Oh, well, they use voice synthesization? Yeah, well, they do <laughs> wild, wild stuff. Uh, They're progressive heavy metal. Progressive rock. heavy metal. And Jordan uh, Rudess is somebody I've interviewed. Uh, I like them. Much. He's I like a nice them. guy. He's yeah. a Juilliard trained pianist. But their yes. music is... It's beautiful. like classical Metallica. It is. Like classical Metallica. It's gorgeous. And uh, they've got an app now called Morph Wiz. It, it's, been, it's on the iPad. I highly suggest it. But um, without guys like him, who yeah. recently died, I mean, none of this stuff, we, we wouldn't see it. By the way, Penny Arcade has their response to the PSN yeah, what is outage. It? Oh, no. There, it's right there. Dear PlayStation, how come I can't play any of my games online? Online? More like yawn line. Single player's where the real action is. Why play with a boring weirdo loser when you could play with yourself? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I play with a weirdo loser yeah. when you can. Thank you, Penny Arcade. Well, I do that because I know you're a big Penny Arcade. I love Penny Arcade. Yeah. It makes me happy. Penny Arcade. It's nice. You know, I still play Doom. I still have an old version what? of Doom. Are you I'm playing what? on your phone or on your computer? Yeah, on a computer? computer? I've got an old version of Doom. And I found a version of Pong for my little boy. So this is uh, the actual original Daisy Daisy from... Uh, Oh. 1961, yeah. an IBM 7094. This is the first computer music synthesis. Yeah. Well, apparently there was an Australian computer in 57. Oh, that come on. Sound. You're like an encyclopedia. No, I went on to <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> I, was like, That's I saw that we need to mention it in the podcast before people. I've met the most in. intelligent man in no. my life here. It's Patrick. That's incredible. <laughs> it's multiphonic. 1961, polyphonic. you said? Everybody sing. La, 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 la. I can't afford a carriage. No, it won't be a stylish won't marriage. Be a I can't stylish afford. marriage. I, I reversed it. <laughs> or maybe Did I you it. look sweet upon the seat of a IBM built for two. Look at all the look at all the computing power it took. Boom. Oh. Boom. 1961. Boom. Wow. There you go. That's pretty good. Nice. And you know what? Sounds like T-Pain. Well, it also is like Apple's voice synthesis still sounds like this when it's reading to you. <laughs> There's a little better than that. That's something. I'm happy, Mac I'm happy, Mac That's pretty cool. 1961. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a that was a neat video. That's from YouTube. Thank you to the chat room for passing that. Yeah. Along as long as we're doing the obituary section. Oh no. Sidney Harmon of Harmon Carden passed oh. away. Well, he was ninety two. It wasn't uh, wasn't unexpected. Unexpected, oh. but uh, he was the guy who brought stereo hi uh, fi systems to the average person. He was a uh, physicist from City College of New York. Served in the army where he developed a quote sonic deception broadcasting machine. We've perfected that, by the way, since then. Uh, um, it was used to confuse the Germans at the Battle of the Bulge. And when he came home from the war, he borrowed $10,000 in venture capital and with Bernard Cardin, the Cardin and Harmon Cardin, yeah. created the first high-fidelity sound system 
for the home. People were amazed. That's the only thing that made it worth it. Hour and a half commute up to Pebble. Harmon Carton. I've got a Harmon Carton. Do you have a Harmon Carton? I do. In my They're room. still around. In fact, we've been talking with them. They're going to do, Harmon's going to do a thing for TVs that will, that, so you can watch Twit on the TV. So they asked us, can wow. we can we put Twit? I said, yeah. Yeah. Of Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, they uh, they do speakers, Harmon International Industries, amplifiers, home theater systems, voice activated telephones, GPS systems, climate controls. And guess what? Last year, he bought Newsweek magazine <laughs> for $1. Do you remember that, Mark? He, they had forty-seven million in uh, in debt, and the Washington Post yeah. company was looking was for a mass somebody. Exodus from Newsweek. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everybody left, and that was the end of that. One dollar. That's one dollar. What's happened to the media? <laughs> one. What's happened? To All the right, media? we got Did more. You... We got more. Here's another one. Did you hear that the army in the obituary has... section? Yes, Go ahead. Yeah. I wanted to tell you that the Army has standardized on the Android. Did you see this? New no, I did see that. They're going to have battle phones. They're going to have battle phones. And, and <laughs> Wouldn't it be Apple funny when they crash? This. Apple bid for this, but the Army wanted an open platform. Yeah, and I'm not surprised. Okay. And Jerry Lawson passed away. He was 70 oh. years old. He was the inventor of cartridge-based video game consoles. Yep. His quote about uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, did you see that? No. Yeah. Uh, I had the uh, article up here. Because they both oh, worked okay. at Atari. He was, at the, yeah, he was so the only were... black guy at the Homebrew, Homebrew Computer Club. Yeah, the, at the Homebrew com Computer Club, he knew Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. I think Steve Wozniak applied for a job, and Lawson says, quote, I was not impressed with them, either one of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they were long-haired, barefoot, hippie weirdos. Uh, just, uh, well, actually, you guys know I wrote the biography of Wozniak, so I will just say I was. I was. Everybody so I run out and buy a copy. Wozniak <laughs> did work for a, a, a Atari and wrote uh, many versions of that. Of he wrote Breakout, and then wrote, Steve wrote Jobs Breakout. ripped him off. Jo he did. did now, so let me were, ask you, because I've Jobs never... I've did I've, not get hired, and they would only let him come in at night because yeah. he smelled poorly. And he smelled bad. Not smell poorly. He smelled po bad. What a hit. Because he was just such a vegan. <laughs> there was a vegan problem. And Nolan Bushnell said, <laughs> so, Steve Jobs so, could come in, but he could so only work little, at night. He's a little gassy. It's in the book. Is that what you're saying? I was. He or was, was it patchouli gassy. oil? All vegetarians are a little gassy. I, no. I, not unless so. Unless you take Beano. Unless you take Beano. Well. You know, really gassy. I work with a number of vegetarians. I don't. I think categorizing. Are you disputing me? I'm oh, dear. Maybe not everyone's system is, is. Oh, dear. Is, 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 is. <laughs> At any rate, that was in my oh, book dear. what they blamed it on. He was a little gassy. And it's in I was. And so you were, wait, you were <laughs> saying? It was exactly right, but it was it was Jobs who wasn't hired at a but, but wasn't the story was that the Jobs went to Waz and said, we've got a contract for Breakout. We can write Breakout for Atari, and they will give us, I think he said $5,000. Waz wrote it. Steve got like 10000 mm Mm-hmm. He got much, much more, but gave Waz just a little bit of it. Yes, and that's did Waz, story, And Waz found out about it later. Wozniak found out about it. He was very hurt, and in fact, I had to talk him into putting that in the book. Yeah, because he's never... I've because talked to him a lot, like, and he's never talked about it. He doesn't want to talk about it, and he's very hurt about it. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I, he, he felt like he was taken advantage of. Well, he and was he taken advantage of. And he was taken advantage <laughs> of, and he's friends with Steve Jobs. I mean, for, to him, you know, he feels like, you know, those two were, you know... The founders of Apple, and he doesn't want to have bad feelings about him, but he, he tried to have it not be in the book. And I said, Look, you got Interesting. Have that no, in the you book. got to. It's, 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 it's a part of his. But now look at Paul Allen's book, in which he's just slamming Bill Gates. and the Balmer and saying, Gates, I mean, yeah. Gates and Balmer tried to rip me off by reducing my uh, interest in Microsoft. And I mean, that, this, is it going to be the season of the tell all? Because, you know, Jobs is writing a book. Jobs, no, no, Jobs, jobs having an authorized book written. Okay. Well, I, wait a minute. Was had a ghostwriter. You, I, but I wasn't a ghostwriter. You weren't a well, ghost. They, they, I was Wozniak, a, or excuse I, me, I Jobs doesn't have a ghostwriter either. But this is the uh, the authorized biography. This guy's had like four years of access. To yeah, I Steve talked Jobs to the guy. And, yeah, the guy interviewed me. I, oh, do you know about it? Oh, tell us about it. I, what do you know? I'm actually not allowed to tell you about it. He NDA'd, <laughs> NDA'd you for an interview. Yes, I could just tell you that. The writer of that book contacted me and interviewed me about some story that Steve Jobs repeated about me and at some event at Heidi That's Roizen's cool. house, and he fact-checked it with me. And, and, then, and was it accurate? And I was in, yeah, it was more or less accurate. And it was a 
That's classic Apple that they would NDA, NDA for the in interview the for, a book. Right. The, for a book. Well, because I, I, I can't reveal to you the writer and when it's coming out or anything. But oh, I thought we knew the writer. The, the, now it's the out. This was six months ago. This oh, this was, was a while ago. ago. This was a while ago. But the story was that I was at a party at Heidi Roizen's house. She's a, a wealthy Heidi person. and and Steve were an item. It's not Heidi and Steve were an item. And I was at a party there, and Gil Emilio at the time was the CEO of Apple. Much hated. Much hated. And I was, and Larry Ellison and I were at the party. And Larry said, do you want to meet Gil Emilio? And I was like, yeah, as a reporter, I want to meet the CEO of sure. Apple. So he comes up and introduces me to him. So I say, to him, you know, one quote, so what are you going to do to turn Apple around? He goes, well, Apple's like a boat. And the boat's got a hole in it. Oh, I and remember the people this quote. Are, row, are rowing, but they're rowing in different directions. And there's a fire in the back of the boat. <laughs> I remember and this I'm quote. And I'm looking at him, and my eyes are getting wider this is and the wider. Best quote I, ever. I, I stop writing at this point. Like I'm just looking at him. I go, "So what do you do?" And he goes, "Well, we get everyone rowing." I'm like, "What about the fire? <laughs> <laughs> what about, what about the, the hole? hole?" And Larry was falling over laughing. Oh, and I remember so this, this quote. Well, this story was is in the Steve Jobs book, apparently. I, that Steve Jobs oh is repeating it, so I was asked to fact check that story. And wow! Well, now it's awesome. now you know. But it, it was just a, such a crazy wow. thing. Wow, Doctor Emilio, like Dr. too many Gil. metaphors there. Well, hey, as long as we're talking about your book, we should mention that it's available on Audible dot com. Uh, both my it. books are available, but what's what's the other book? It was like a biotech book, Audible. right? Yeah, the genomics, genomics or genomics, however you prefer to say it, it age. Well, you should know. You wrote the book. How do you say it? The correct way to say it is <laughs> like the human genome. It is genomics. 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 A lot of people say genomics because it's more like, like economics. economics but genomics. Yeah, it is okay. the genomics age. You heard that it here. Audible. Does Audible ask you like that? Do they say, hey, how do you say genomics? Did they call you and say you wrote the book? How do you say That's genomics? That's a good question. You know, I think it just showed up on that. But it certainly, uh, with <laughs> I was. didn't ask anybody. With I was, uh, th when the Kindle came out, they contacted us and said, hey, do you want I was to be the first book on the Kindle? Oh, that's and cool. And we were like, oh, that would Hell be yeah. cool. But you know what we forgot to ask? What? What are you going to pay us? Well, why would you get paid extra? We got paid nothing. Why should you? Well, they're selling tons of I was books. Well, on I'm Kindle sure they paid you the same. The book and I've, didn't they pay the like same E3 royalty as if you. Per, per, um, like, they didn't like. Huh? No, no royalties, nothing. Well, that doesn't seem Maybe right. my agent's, like, scoring some. Do you get any money from Audible? Some more chocolate. Here, have some more chocolate. <laughs> Poor Gina. Chocolate makes have everything Have some more better. chocolate. Can That's you? nice. Aww. 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 Okay. Is that Aww. a Cadbury Aww. egg? Very nice. I got you. Man. Is that a Cadbury egg? Hey, you want one? Well, you know what's interesting? I just, there was a front page story. Oh, no, this is a Russell Stover. There's a front page story in the Wall Street Journal about the Cadbury egg because there's apparently a Facebook campaign. Because, you know, Cadbury eggs are little. They're like this. They're little because, and they got the cream filled, right? Right. But then when you get a big Cadbury egg, it's hollow <gasps> because it's technically a challenge. Why don't we have the cream filled gigantic egg? There's a egg. Facebook page <laughs> saying, and, the, and so they interview on the Wall Street Journal, this, this, yesterday's Wall Street Journal, they interview the Cadbury fellow. He says, well, it, technically, it'd be very difficult to make an egg of that size filled with egg yolk, egg yolk colored fondant. It would fall apart. Fondant. Fondant. That's so what's in there. You'd have to make there. like a quarter inch, half inch thick chocolate wall. It would just... Exactly. The what structure. Is the of that accent, by the way. Structurally. Yeah. Is that a good British accent? The, the Dutch people love it. The, the English people say, what the hell the country are you from? Dutch people say, that's exactly what English people sound like. They sound just like this. This is. Well, actually, we're going to talk about something. And I'm going to ask our, our British visitors yeah. about a very special event that's coming up Friday in Great Britain. But before we do that, before we do that. they're not happy. They are Friday. not happy. Yeah. Before we do that, let's talk about audible.com. Audible is a great place to get your audio books. Actually, I'm listening to an audio book that is in that kind of plummy British accent. By whom is? Uh, it's Peter F. Hamilton, The Dreaming Void, and I just adore it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. They're laughing. All the Brits in here are laughing. <laughs> I don't know if I was as red like that. They can't <laughs> understand it. I have no idea what I'm saying. I'm and what is he saying? What is he talking about? What kind of language? Are you from Australia? Um, South Africans. <laughs> <laughs> I was. How I invented the personal computer and had fun along the way. And as you mentioned the last time we, we talked about this, the guy they picked sounds just like was. He and called me and tricked and me. being so little and thinking, wow, wow, what a great, great world he's living in. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
Steve. I was. That's how so, he sounds. If you are interested, uh, there it is, Steve Wozniak and Gina Smith. See, you're not a ghostwriter because your name is on it. Right, I don't ghost. And any writer who wants to be a writer should not ghost, even though you make a ton more money doing it. Because, really? Well, yeah, because you don't get credit. Well, you don't get credit, so you can never go say, oh, I did uh, Hillary Clinton's, you know. Well, that's whatever. why you get a ton more money. The ghostwriters make a lot of money. They make $200,000 per book. What? You say that like it's a bad thing. Well, you just yeah. don't get credit you're for a writer it. And wait a you minute. Want a wait a minute. You get two hundred thousand dollars and you don't have to go on the book tour. Love it. But you can't ever say that you wrote the book. Well, who cares? Especially I if it's care. a crappy a writer, book about Gail Amelia. I want to be able to say. Then write I your wrote poetry and put it on the internet where everyone can get it for free. <laughs> you're right. Be famous. Just fame and no money. Well, actually, that's what's happening to me. So, <laughs> yeah, so you're, you, got, you got your wish, baby. I, did, I got my wish. Like, so I'm just curious if Gil's broken, book. Broken, well known. How do you spell Amelia? A M E L I O. Gil's book is not on Audible. Well, what a surprise. He wrote a book about. I'm probably going to get an email now from him after telling that story. Do you know Gil? Of, of course I know Gil. Of course I know Gil. That's where the quote came from. That's where the quote came from. Oh, that's right. You and Heidi Rosen. It's not the chat the chat room people are saying I'm anti Apple. I of course am not anti Apple. No. At all. No. Who would be anti Apple? I I am like they're gonna have to rip this iPhone out of my When uh when Waz talks about Apple and iWaz, is he pretty uh positive about it? Oh yeah, he's absolutely sure. Of course he is. Well, he's he also it. the most gentle. I mean, he's, he's like sweet he may soul. be the most gentle creature I've ever met. I mean, he's, he's kind oh, I agree. And wonderful. He's a, just a god. Did you see what that. happened to him in the news this week? No. So he was quoted in the news this week as saying that he would like to go back to Apple and he would take a job there if they offered it to him. So I emailed him right after that and I said, "Steve, that sounds weird because you hate corporations." Like he's yeah, I can't imagine said, him doing that. Yeah, and he works for Fusion IO, by the way. He's, right. He's and, very excited about Fusion IO. He's very excited about Fusion IO. They do IO. solid state drives solid for state, Enterprise. Yeah, big solid state drives for Enterprise. And so I immediately emailed him and said, "What's what's the story with this? This doesn't sound like you." And plus, Wozniak is a paid employee at Apple. He already he, he works there. He's he still works an employee. There. He's employee zero, as they say. He, they no, he's to one. Start counting. Well, he was one, but Steve Jobs got mad. Right. So Steve Wozniak became employee zero. <laughs> Actually, I think it was the other way around. I think Woz was one, and Jobs said, "Okay, then I'm zero. Right. That's he wanted to be. He wanted to be first. Jobs wanted to be first. Well, I, we got to check the book. I can't remember. Anymore. Is it in the book? It's sure in the book. It I wrote it five years ago. So, so, <laughs> whatever. I think Wozniak is zero. The point is, I emailed Woz and said, "What's the deal?" And he said, "I never said that." My boss from Fusion IO was sitting next to me, and the reporter asked me in 25 different ways, like, isn't Apple cool? Wouldn't you love to work there? Wouldn't, you know, and he said, I was completely Poor Steve correct. gets misquoted more than anyone I know. He's so kind, he'll talk to, you know. I think Steve also is the kind of guy who always says yes. You know, well, his can't wife say, now, though, has, has laid Janet's down a great. lot. Janet's great. Janet's great Janet makes it a lot harder to access. So you out. told me when you were writing this book that you had to meet Steve. At the Hickory Pit. <laughs> the Hickory Pit. It's the Hickory That's Pit. the only place he would go. It's a pie place, a pie and barbecue. Place. I love the Hickory Pit well, in San Jose. I, yeah, I'm a vegetarian. I are you gassy? And, and <laughs> extremely gassy. That's how I knew. I was like, I'm like, I'm now not. Now I gassy. understand. Yeah, of course I'm gassy. So, so now seeing a level my like middle a middle So the good vegetarian, gassy vegetarians, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You are doing it's all the vegetables. It. The good news is you don't have to smell her to read the book. You just listen. Yes. Well, I want. I use perfume. Right? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I, I haven't smelled have a thing. Have you ever noticed I was gassy? Sat Never. Next to me in radio I have sat in, a, I have sat in <laughs> crowded <laughs> air. Uh, Mark's moving. Mark's moving away. <laughs> Let me finish we, this commercial. Sorry. Then I'm gonna. We're gonna talk about Britain. But before we before we go any farther, this is Gina's book. It's a great book. If you love Waz, if you love the history of Apple, it's a wonderful story. And it could be yours free. Free? Yeah. Why? Because we don't want to make any money on or, this book. Wow. No, you'll still get your royalty. I was just going to say, what happens to Don't worry, you still get your now royalty. I'm happy to do it for our listeners here. No, no, here no, no. You still get your royalty. That's the beauty. Audible. Here's the deal. You're going to go to audible.com slash twit2, and you will sign up for the Platinum account. That's two books a month. Mm -hmm. Your first month, there's no charge. So your first two books are free. What? And you cancel any time, you get to keep the book. So the books are yours forever. So this is one, and we need another one. Should we make the second coming of Steve Jobs? Did you read that, Alan Deutschman's book? Oh, Alan Deutschman is a great writer, a great journalist. That's a good book. And it's a very accurate book. This is one that I've been hearing a lot uh, about. Um, this came out uh, late last year, The Return to the Little Kingdom. 
Steve Jobs, The Creation of Apple and How It Changed the World by Michael Moritz. That's another one. There's quite a few books about what Apple. What about Icon? Icon, yeah. Or Icon. Icon. And I'm not anti-Apple. I'm just pointing out the double. You know, I never thought of that. Well, it upset Apple. Yeah, okay. they pulled it. Not only did they pull it from the Apple stores. They also they pulled, pulled I was. every book that was published by the same publisher from the Apple stores. Yeah, they were a little mad about Icon. Well, the new book is by Jobs is going to be called I Jobs, and frankly, I feel kind of ripped off. No, it's because, I Steve. Oh, I Steve. The book You're kidding. Jobs. Thank you. Thank you. I was now I Steve. Yeah, I wrote, yeah. I actually came up with the name I was. I can't to be believe like I that. Claudius. It wasn't supposed to oh, be like iPod. You wanted to be like I Claudius. Yeah, but then like he was the crazy then Roman smart emperor. Smart marketing people said <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid. Call it I was. I was. Uh, but now and then I here's Steve. Icon. So there's too many I books. There's too many I everything. This is the Icon book. Jeffrey Young. Jeffrey Jeff Young wrote this. Uh, he, I like Jeffrey. Jeff is good. He's great. Well, we have the same agent. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. But, you know, I, I never thought about the I-con. Oh, yeah. That's why wow. I, that's why it was so Do you think he's a con man? Do I personally? Yeah. I think he's a terrific marketer, but if you saw him on stage at that iPad 2 announcement. That was a little bit of a con job. That was a little bit of a con job. Not to say I didn't buy one immediately. I, <laughs> <laughs> I might have, maybe I was conned. Maybe it works. Not to say it's not a great product. Oh, it's a wonderful product. It's just that he was not but, accurately. And, and this this is magical and revolutionary. Look, it's the that, cover. It's the cover. The Blackberry's you know had that cover for ten years. Right. I met one of the young people who worked on that cover, and you know what? I think he did a fantastic. I think job. it's really nice. I like it. Right, it's not a case. Loves, it's a cover. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody loves these. And still, a stand. And a when I stand. Watch. You get to do this. Ooh. Kind oh, of wait a minute. My cauliflower is hard. I, hold on. Would you guys... I'll be with you in a... I'll be with you in a... Well, no, look. See, it's all going bad here. I got to... Uh, I got to... I... What are you laughing at? Your virtual I, I can just tell you, Patrick, you're lucky I didn't have oh one of God, these during the screensavers yeah. era because I wouldn't have been paying any attention I, to you. You know, no. Somebody's like, why don't you play these games? Like, I have a three-year-old. I have a 39-pound, 40-inch tall... Now, does Seamus play. like the iPad? Has Seamus, he played with the iPad? Yeah, Seamus loves the iPad. I think three-year-olds love... I think the iPad is for people... Who are three or think like three? Yes. Yeah, kids get this immediately. <laughs> they do. I'm, I've got a demo unit of the Galaxy Tab, and uh, I like the Eric Galaxy. Was, Does he like it? Your eight-year-old? I like it, and he I love got it. within two hours. He was operating yeah. it, pull it fully, and watching YouTube videos of SpongeBob. And you know. we have a disadvantage because we think in mouse keyboard terms. But kids who don't have that interface in their head, they go, "Well, thing. you just touch it, and it, what, what's so complicated? It's obvious." I think I they get it. It's the same thing with the iPod Touch. It's like he's staring into the sun. He's just so mesmerized, and he's just poking every little it's button. It's just natural, there. isn't Eric it? knows absolutely how to operate any, any of these new Apple devices. you got to say about Apple that the interfaces are extreme. But it is like a boat on fire with a hole in it, and everybody ruined it. just was it. back then when okay. Emilio was running it. Dr. Emilio, I'm Doc, sorry. Doc, I, I mean, that was he, the iMac. I don't, I'm not a fan of Gilamia. He claimed that, he said, everything Steve Jobs did, I started. I was doing all that when Steve showed up. He just took off from what I did. Okay. <laughs> I got them all rowing together. There's a hole in the boat. He doesn't talk like that, by the There's way. There's a fire. Audible.com slash twit2. Two books free. You know, I got to plug The Dreaming Void because I am, I, am, I am so enjoying this book. It's one of the best books I've science fiction or any books I've ever read. And uh, it's a trilogy, three books, so it's like hundreds of hours. You will never run out. <laughs> your first your first two are free, but you still got to buy the third one. So I'm going to throw that in as a... You do have to buy the third. Yes, I'm sorry. You have to buy the third. I'm, just, I just I'm giving you two. I'm going to do this. Okay, 22 hours for the first one free. And then you go to the second one, which is the temporal void. And then that's 25 hours and 15 minutes free. That's a lot of audio for nothing. 37 hours for nothing. And you're supporting Twit. And Oh, did I mention that you're supporting Twit? You're right. Let's not forget. Audible.com slash twit2. Thank the Audible for their support. They're just great. So uh, we have received, I'm very excited about this. Um, there is something going on, you probably heard, in Great Britain on Friday. You guys excited? What are you doing here in the States? Don't you have a wedding to go to? We can get wedding. the invite through, so we, you know. She's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. And we have exclusive video. This is what happened. You have exclusive wedding video? I switched over to the wrong button. Really? Here we go. This is exclusive video. Uh, no, it's from the rehearsal. Let me see if I can if I can get this going here. Sometimes YouTube is so Here we go. Maybe you maybe you this was this is West Westminster Abbey, right? Yeah. Westminster Abbey. It's very exciting. World leaders 
all there. There's, I think that's Harry. I don't know wow. who the little one is. <laughs> all right, it's a T-Mobile commercial, but I couldn't resist it. Have you seen this yet? Oh, yeah. There's the bishop, the Archbishop of Canterbury. He's a party animal. Yeah. There's a hoedown. All right, all right. I, you got the idea. Chat, the chat room is hating it. They're hating it. They're hating it. They're, hating it. They're saying, take this lame. I'm taking, I'm taking yeah. it so personally. I love how we listen the to the chat room. We lame, used to show and ignore dumb. the chat room. Dumb. When will this craze die? Arg. Arg. <laughs> what is that, like a Snoopy term? Arg. Arg. This is what Charlie Brown says when they take with Arg. Football. Arg. Arg. <laughs> yeah, Anybody play any Portal 2? Portal 2? Mark, I'm really I'm d disappointed in you. I, I, I can't get on the PS3. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get on the PlayStation you can't network. Get on the network. For sure, Mark Millian would have, would have. How is it? It's awesome. Is it awesome? I'm, in fact, I'm going to end the show right now because I want to go home and play. You are? You're going to you update show? your cabbage or your radishes? I first I have to I first update my cabbage. That's good. <laughs> um, I've got to. Uh, you don't play these games, do you? Yes, I'm going to update my cabbage. What do you want me to do? Play the games or raise my son? <laughs> no, I have a choice. No, yeah. I've, I have a real it. clear I choice. I already gave up on I my son. I didn't see a movie for years when Eric was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Too late. There's no time for that. There's Although, no, no raising going tiny on. Tiny Wings. He yeah. really likes Tiny Wings. Tiny Wings is yeah. a fun game. It's, it's, it's really easy to get obsessed with. Yeah, I like Tiny Wings a lot. So you got a little bird, and you and you press it when you want him to go faster downhill, but you have to un, you have to let yeah, go. If you can poke a screen, you can be successful at Tiny Wings. That's Maybe that's why I like it so much because it's very much like harvesting <laughs> cauliflower. That's interesting. I, yeah. I, before you end the show, Leo, I definitely want to thank you for something. Well, uh, my whole damn staff. Yeah, uh, no literally, uh, Team Bite is uh, sixty of the best. Team Bite. From four shows, I did, I did I, as I've told you. Are you still you, looking? I'm, yeah, uh, I could probably fill five or six more slots. Do they get paid it, for this? Yes, of course. It's you. You write, you get paid. It's a, it's a magazine. Mm -hmm. It's journalism. It's the return of authoritative journalism. But the point is, as I was on the Who's show, who's doing this? Me. No, but I mean, like, is there doing? somebody behind you doing this? Well, uh, Brian Burgess, who is Mystic Actually, Geek. Actually, you don't on, really want to be behind here. Gina. Apparently, she's a gassy vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. Leah, I already know the name of this week's episode now, which is the saddest thing because it's Gassy like, vegetarian. Yes, it's just gassy Gina or something. It's going to be terrible. Leo knows better. He's been I sitting next to, to me you. for years. I wouldn't do that to you. You wouldn't? No. I would, just wanted to thank you for that cause, because we were doing the show and I was asking for contributors to bite. I had 1,300 or 1,400 people to choose and I picked the 60 best. And they range from age 77, which is Jerry Purnell, all the way down to 20, and they include like some incredible journalists. I can't wait. And what is the time the frame for this? Right what, what are we? What are we going to see? Bite magazine come back? Well, it's kind of like your studio, you know. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, it might Remember be exactly we were the same time. Try to launch around. Uh, yeah. We're looking at uh, early July, but if you go to www.bite.com. Uh, we're already doing, like, little tiny podcasts. Oh, so you're already doing content? Uh, just a little bit. We've got a, a one show uh, called Mo uh, Byte Wireless Radio, um, which is just a 15-minute little show. I do Are with you doing Greg that? Johnston. Oh, just that's a neat. tiny little thing. A week, in, a week in mobile news, we'll do one on Apple News. Hmm. We'll do one on Gadget News. And, you know, and I'm writing stories, of course. And then when, when Byte launches, we're going to move all that personal tech stuff over to Byte. And we're creating some amazing how-tos. These, so this is the tech web people who are doing this. Uh, no, well, tech web is owned by a company, a British company, called UBM. Uh, United Business Media is in London, and that's who bought Byte. And oh, that's neat. And I noticed they, they have Byte on Twitter. They have at Byte, at B-Y-T-E. That's awesome. And we, we own Byte. We're wow. bringing it back. Wow, it I'm so pleased. Like, and this team of people are I'm gonna amazing. Follow, I'm going to follow Byte. That they all showed up today. Well, I found them all here, so I guess it's not weird that I would... <laughs> find them all here but we're creating some amazing that's great in fact if you're in the chat room content. everybody on your uh, bike team has byte at the beginning of their chat handle right oh that's intelligent that's awesome. of them that's smart. No. see i told you they were smart they're a smart bunch but i want to just say yes you you won't believe the quality of the editorial when it comes i'm excited to i gonna... want but i bite was the magazine i cut my teeth on I'm it was a excited. bible attack for it me. really was yeah yeah and you know what i'm gonna make sure it's that again and we will be doing a bite cast roundtable uh, podcast of your uh, contributors soon, as soon as the yes. new studio is here. I guess here. I'm hosting it with, with you or someone else. I don't know if I'll be there because it's Fridays. Maybe. We'll join sometime. I'll join. Oh, I want to be yeah. part of it. You but it'll that. be on Fridays. And so, so, yeah, July.
But I wanted to thank you for that. I want to thank Team Bite for being so cool. You got it. Craig Johnston for... You got it, baby. Look at that Bite. Doing Bite Wireless Radio with Mark Millian is at CNN. Where can we uh, find you at CNN? Thank you, yes. Are you... you, Do you appear regularly? Tech. Uh, I've been on... I was... uh, Last Wednesday on the TV channel. As the but you're more on the web side? Yeah, I work on the web stuff, write, and uh, do a little bit of video. Is it fun? You enjoy it? Yeah, it's good. Uh, Time Warner is a giant, giant company. Which yes, is they are. Which is 180 from uh, Tribune, <laughs> which is uh, having some trouble still. And that was the LA Times was Tribune? Yeah, yeah we're I owned by that. Tribune in uh, Chicago. Uh, so, so our what is your title at the cnn.com slash tech? Are you tech writer, tech, tech writer guy, or something like that? Hey, you want to write for Byte? Not tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else has that. anyone I meet at Twit like has it automatic, and I'll look at your resume and your clips. Well, Mark, so always great to see you. you. Thank you so much. And now that you're in the Bay Area, I think we'd like to get you on more because it's always fun to have you on. Great, really appreciate it. My old pal Patrick Norton, wow. hey, host of Techzilla, and. Uh, Excellent. What else are you up to these days? Mostly Texel and raising my kid. And the, and the, and the man <laughs> in charge of Seamus. Yes. I love Texel. Oh, by the way, the thank you so much. Yeah. It's, it is just great. It's great. And yeah. uh, having a three year old and doing Texel at the same time, congratulations on that. Cause well, that, it's, you know, it'd be a lot harder to work like double shifts at a GM factory turn in. That's true. Years. You know, we, we have to remember that. <laughs> this isn't easier, this isn't work exactly. No, I've, I, people were farming out where I was traveling last week, and you know, I've, actual farming or actual cauliflower? Farming, not oh. cauliflower. Well, cauliflower farming in the real world is actual <laughs> farming. Cauliflower <laughs> does exist outside my of wife, your iPad. My, I'm, I it's said, a vegetable. Check I, into them; you'll get gassy. It's good. I said, this, I said, I said to her, "This is just a recreation. It's like knitting or something." She said, "If you were knitting, we'd have a sweater at least. Or, or blankets. <laughs> at least we'd have something." Wait, to now, show. what is this? Is this the map program the that map you program. used? Scenic map is named the map program. Scenic uh, map. Look at this. Actually. Let me hold this oh, up. Oh, yeah. We're going to do this whole demo. This is beautiful. So these are... these we'll are. We'll uh, start uh, digging in. It's, it's actually... It's a full we can't really hear you. you got to put your mic, your voice Sorry. in. It's a full vector-based topo map. So if you're... So it zooms here. without uh, more downloads. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And it's all da- it's all local. Because I've been I've run into some frustration with some of the applications that are like, we need to download this. And I'm like, I'm in the desert. There's not a cell tower in 60 right. miles of here. Right. So that's cool. good stuff. I can hold it up in front of you. And then they'll see Perfect. it. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. there you go. That's, now you got That's it. really yep. pretty. And well, so these, are these digital or are they, I mean, they're obviously digital, but I mean, yeah. are they coming from paper topo maps? Or? Uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out what the original source was. Um, oh, this is great. And you use this for your uh, truck uh, racing or? I have not used it for the racing yet. You could though, I guess. Uh, well, what do you use it for? I've been using it for exploring hiking? the backcountry. So you're um, hiking around with this? Yeah, mostly a little bit of hiking, but mostly when we're traveling in the vehicle and we're looking. Because wow. we did like a couple. That's neat. We only did about 60 or 70 miles of, of traveling on dirt. But we ended up coming into Kodachrome Basin, which is a state park in Utah from a southern entrance, which was really fun. Very cool. Thanks. It's nice Scen- to see you, Patrick. I haven't seen you in seven years. At least. Yeah, because you guys started doing screensavers right when I left uh, for mm. New York. So that's, that's right. Yeah, but. That's right. I was watching it. Mm-hmm. It's nice so to much. see you again after so long. A pleasure. Congratulations so, on propagating. I was going to check. <laughs> propagating or replicating? Both. Procreating. Procreating. Yeah. Procreating. Thank There's you. a writer. Ask a writer. I know. I've been, <laughs> I've been out thesaur- of newspapers thesaur- for too long. Thank <laughs> you. Procreating. Propagating. Propagating. That's what you do with crops. Replicating. Cloning. We, we have uh, some uh, yeah. special shows coming up uh, this week. I just wanted to remind uh, people about uh, we will have... Um, uh, the author of the new In the Plex, the book about Google, Stephen Levy, will be joining us Ooh. for uh, This Week in Google on Tuesday. That should be a lot of fun. Stephen's really a great guy, very knowledgeable. They say Wednesday. Book. <laughs> yeah. It's This Week in Google on Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday. It's actually Wednesday. Steve, Steve We're doing Twig on Wednesday? Oh, we always do Twig on Wednesday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a great guy. You're, you're, He's a great Actually, person. we got a big Wednesday because triangulation. Then a couple hours later, Michael Robertson. Remember him? Yeah. Started, founded uh, mp3.com. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a and there's there's very outspoken Dvorak guy. Dvorak always That's makes fun of him and calls him a male <laughs> yeah, model. Seriously. Michael yeah. Robertson, is he really good looking? I actually disagree with yeah. him. Yeah. And whenever Dvorak sees him, he word. always introduces him. This is Michael Robertson, <laughs> a male model. Male model. Male model Michael Robertson, but he was the mp3 guy. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everybody for being here. We do this show every Sunday, 3 p.m., even on Easter, which is kind of amazing. Thank you for bringing some chocolate eggs. Yeah. 
Those were good, Mark Millian. We appreciate it. I brought broken 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 6 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. Hard-boiled eggs from Gina. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can, of course, watch it uh, after the fact at live. Uh, or rather, at twit.tv. Live.twit.tv is where you can watch it live. Uh, what day is uh, This Week in Google on? Wednesday. Wednesday. Just checking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't moved since uh, five minutes ago. No. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, coming up in just a bit, East Meets West. With Tom Merritt and Roger Chang, I'm Leo Laporte. We'll see you next time. Another twit. It's in the can. Thank you. Yay! Yay! All right. It's actually around 25% of his... Uh, <laughs> Stop uh, smirking, Million. <laughs> I personally find crazy. Million is smirking. No smirking allowed, it's kid. It's shiny. It's shiny. I, I That's like, funny. I, I never. Braces. Did you wear Mark? Did you wear braces? Everybody wears braces. You did wore you braces, wear right? No, I, I'm the you only think person. I got teeth like this my kids braces? wore braces. I have perfect teeth, a perfect bite. You do. Never wore braces. I, don't know, I was blessed. Impressive. I know. I'm very lucky. I've never had a cavity. That I have. Welcome to the dental show. How did you I'm never have a say. cavity? You know, it was just a strange thing. We do have a dental show. It's called Floss Weekly. You could be you on You should that. put me on because I've never had a cavity. I just have some bizarre bacteria in my mouth. Gina wants to be on Floss Weekly. I do. I'm going to get Randall Schwartz and say, hey, Randall, I got a great guest for you. <laughs> Won't that be fun? Open oh, no, source no. dentistry. <laughs> I have never been so afraid in my life. <laughs> Here we go. We're going we're to start now. All right. Before Ron gets back, let's start. Can I cough? <laughs> yes. Excuse me, y'all. Okay, now we can begin. All right, here we go. In three, two. What comes after two? Uh, it's time for two, <laughs> three. Thank you, John. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>